Uh, welcome back, councillors. The meeting is now resumed. Are there any apologies for today? I see no apologies. The Lord Mayor. <clears throat> uh, Mr Chair, I move that the resolution of rates and charges included, uh, including all provisions and appendices as set out on pages 210 to 306. Uh, number two, the annual plan and budgeted financial statements as set out on pages seven to 15, comprising of A, a summary of recommendations, B, statement of income and expenditure, C, statement of in income and expenditure business and council providers, D, statement of financial position, E, statement of changes in equity, uh, F, statement of cash flows, G, uh, st uh, summary of recommendations, long time, a long term financial forecast, and H, statement of financial ratios. Three, revenue policy and revenue statement as set out on pages 196 to 209. And four, the schedule of fees and charges, the register of cost recovery fees and associated delegations to the chief executive officer be noted for later debate and adoption. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by the Deputy Mayor, that the resolution of rates and charges, including all provisions and appendices, are set out on pages 210 to 306. Uh, two, the annual plan and budgeted financial statements as set out on pages 7 through 15, comprising of A, summary of recommendations, B, statement of income and expenditure, C, statement of income and expenditure, business and council providers, D, the statement of financial position, E, the statement of changes in equity, F, the statement of cash flows. G, the summary of recommendations, long-term financial forecast. H, statement of financial records. Three, the revenue policy and revenue statement as set out on pages 196 to 209. And four, the schedule of fees and charges, the register of cost recovery fees and associated delegations to the chief executive officer be noted for later debate and adoption. All those in favor say aye. And raise aye. Your hand. aye. Thank you. Please lower your hands. And those against, no. The ayes have it. Councillors, the presentation of various programs and businesses and council providers uh, will be in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 74 of the Meetings Local Law 2001. Point of order. Point of order, Lord Mayor. Uh, Mr Chair, I'd like to move a motion to change the order of the programs for debate um, as per Section 11. Uh, 2A of the meeting local law 2001. I move that program seven be brought forward for debate first. Uh, the re remaining programs would stay in order and debate um, be debated as per normal. Seconded. Right. Um, I think uh, my understanding is the Lord Mayor has that authority to change the agenda at his discretion. So we will accept the change and we'll move directly to program seven. I'll now ask the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Adams, to present that program, please. Economic Development, the Deputy Mayor. Mr Chair, I move that the Economic Development Program, the services of Council, the allocations for operations and the projects and the rolling projects as set out on pages 114 to 125 for the years 2021 through to 2023-24, so far as they relate to Program 7, be adopted. Second that. It's been moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Hammond, that for the Economic Development Program, the services of Council, the allocations for operation and projects and the rolling projects are set out on, on pages 114 to 125 for the years 2021 through 23, 24, so far as they relate to Program 7, be adopted. Is there any debate with the Deputy Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I rise, metaphorically, to speak on Program 7, Economic Development. And I thank the Lord Mayor for bringing this very important program forward today because this program is dedicated to building Brisbane's economy and creating new and innovative jobs now and into the future. Got it. Over the last decade, Brisbane has strengthened its position as the main engine of economic growth for South East Queensland and is the most significant economy in Queensland. We've worked hard to establish ourselves and put Brisbane on the map as a globally attractive destination, famous for our unique outdoor lifestyle, boasting year-round events, festivals and activities, and quickly emerging as one of the most desirable locations for new and emerging businesses. 
But Brisbane's economic situation has changed significantly and our 2020-21 budget is being handed down in a climate of economic recovery. The COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent restrictions imposed to contain it put a temporary pause on much of Brisbane's economy. This year's economic development program will have a critical role in delivering economic recovery strategies to get local business back on their feet and restore confidence in the economy. We will continue to focus our efforts on supporting local business and strive towards our goal of creating the most business friendly city in Australia. We know that families from all corners of our city are doing it tough and struggling with a loss in income and unemployment. Small business is the backbone of Brisbane's economy and it is the heart and soul of our community. The people of Brisbane know it was going to be a tough road ahead, but they've put their trust in our Lord Mayor and this administration to lead them through with confidence. They have recognised that in a time of crisis and uncertainty, experience and leadership is what matters most. We took early action in the midst of a looming economic crisis to give business the help they needed with a $7.9 million business support package that will waive a range of charges, rents and permit fees for businesses until December 2020. We established the Buy Local campaign to ramp up the support for local businesses in suburbs and introduced the local buy procurement policy to ensure that council contracts would prioritise local business first and foremost, including a seven day payment terms for small business suppliers. Knowing that we're about to enter one of the greatest economic downturns of our generation, the Lord Mayor immediately established the Economic Recovery Task Force, ably led by the Chair of Finance, Councillor Adam Allen. The task force has been hard at work developing targeted initiatives that will steer this city through the recovery phase and lay the foundation to build a new and better Brisbane. These are not temporary measures. The Lord Mayor announced that we will continue to roll out these initiatives and refocus this year's budget to revitalise Brisbane's economy and get people and businesses back up and running again. The retasking of Brisbane marketing to Brisbane Economic Development Agency was one of the first and immediate changes made to support the needs of council and the people of Brisbane at this time. The Brisbane EDA will shift its focus to deliver a range of programs to drive economic recovery and look to boost Brisbane as a destination for visitors and investors. In partnership with Council's economic development team, Brisbane Economic Development Agency will establish a Brisbane business hub to be hosted at the Capitol in the Queen Street Mall. The hub will offer business, businesses in Brisbane the support they need to get them through these next few months and provide a space for new and emerging businesses to establish themselves in the Brisbane market. In the first year alone, we expect the Brisbane hub to help up to a thousand businesses to recover and secure their future build a stronger, more resilient environment for businesses in Brisbane to grow and prosper. We now look to the future to ensure Brisbane meets its full potential for economic growth, recovery and vitality. The ED program will support Brisbane's long-term economic goals and shift our focus to support industries where Brisbane demonstrates a competitive advantage. One of the first actions we'll be taking to, uh, is to develop a two-year interim action plan to guide our economic development strategies for Brisbane beyond the current 2012 Brisbane Economic Development Plan. This plan will focus on delivering the programs and initiatives brought down through the Economic Recovery Task Force and will look to identify clear short-term goals that can support the Brisbane economy during the current climate of economic uncertainty. This is a unique opportunity to focus local focus on local markets and skills development while also protecting key industries for future expansion once restrictions ease and trade can resume. With change brings new and exciting opportunities to better the way we live and work and build a strong foundation for growth and revitalisation. In the face of rapid population growth, new technology and changing consumer business needs, we need to be more agile than ever. We have established the Office of City Analytics to monitor and report the impacts of COVID on our economy. When the pandemic hit and our city went into lockdown, we witnessed widespread disruption across all corners of the city. A quick recovery is possible, but when faced with uncertainty and change, we need to be able to provide surety in our decisions and restore confidence in the community. By analysing available data on Brisbane residents and businesses from various sources, we're able to build a strong alignment between how we collect and use this data to drive decisions and prioritise city shaping projects. In addition, we can monitor the economic recover and measure the performances of our city services and compare our performance against other cities around the world. 
sharing this information in Brisbane platforms will give our local businesses greater insight into current economic climate so they are best positioned to make changes and adapt to suit the current needs of the city. The impacts of COVID have demonstrated more than ever the value of information and knowledge sharing, and we are committed to connecting business through this time of uncertainty with the tools they need to recover and thrive. Our popular developmental programs, training and skill workshops have not stopped and will continue to roll out over the next year to support our budding entrepreneurs, startups and youth in Brisbane. Owning a small business is tough at the best of times and our dedicated business webpage and Business in Brisbane Facebook group provides a connected community of business owners and offers them practical tips and advice to help them grow. The Facebook group has proved highly successful in the current climate, providing local business owners with the most up-to-date resources and information available. With more than two and a half thousand members and growing, it's a great way to connect with other business owners and learn firsthand from business experts what it takes to own and operate a successful business. We also provide a citywide events calendar for businesses to share their events for free and see what other events are happening in Brisbane. With a new dedicated online present for Brisbane businesses, it'll be an integral service going forward. We've received overwhelming feedback from those who attend these programs and will now investigate other ways to provide opportunities for businesses to learn new skills and engage with the broader business community. Some of which will move into that Brisbane Business Hub as the central location for support and learning as it then spreads throughout the suburbs across the city. Our 24 hour business hotline and dedicated team of business liaison officers will also be available to help business owners access the relevant information and resources they need. Through precinct support, we will provide more direct support to local businesses in our suburbs with the continuation of our local business partnership initiatives. This initiative has been highly successful in helping business precincts strengthen their local brand and create a destination experience that attracts residents and visitors to the area, encouraging them to spend locally and connect in their communities. We've made it easier for businesses to get up and running, and we've invested $2 million to subsidise a vast range of council fees and charges by up to 50% and reduce the cost of obtaining the necessary approvals to operate their businesses. A lot of precincts have struggled with more and more shop vacancies and the Suburban Shopfront Activation Program, which was launched earlier this year, is up and running again and looking to connect property owners with emerging businesses that are seeking temporary pop-up space to give their business a boost. To incentivise participants, we are offering 2,000 grants to the first 12 matches to cover the costs in setting up their pop-up shop so they have the best chance at access. Further grants are available to business owners to incentivise small-scale improvement projects that give shopfront facades a facelift in a bid to lift the standard and amenity in our local shopping precincts, creating high-quality and attractive neighbourhood centres. There is an ever greater need at this time to activate our suburban shopping precincts and help revitalise our local businesses. And with the reconnection of our locals into these precincts over the lockdown period over the last couple of months, I think we have a fantastic opportunity to make sure that these initiatives and programs offer exactly that. Of course, we can't forget we also have our city and valley malls that although have been a bit quiet over the last couple of months, are the very heart of our CBD and they need our support as well. These areas make up the majority of our city's workforce and attract more than 26 million visitors a year. The continued investment in world-class infrastructure has unlocked new opportunities for growth and development, connecting residents, workers and visitors to the epicentre of business, retail and entertainment. Our efforts will look to promote the many events and activities that are held year round to stimulate the day and night economy in these precincts. Positioning Brisbane City as a premier destination to stay, play, shop and dine not only attracts domestic and international visitors, but encourages residents and workers to delve deeper into the unique offerings we have right here in our own backyard. Our dedicated web platforms and social media accounts look to showcase our vibrant and creative city. There is so much on offer and it's all about raising awareness and encouraging people to stay longer with more to see and do. With a focus on improving the overall visitor experience and boosting foot traffic to local traders, the ongoing maintenance improvements that are undertaken on a day-to-day -day business ensure that these key precincts operate at a world-class standard and are safe, accessible and clean. 
These are essential services our residents expect from our council and are what gives us the competitive edge when people choose to live, work and stay in Brisbane. And of course, Brisbane Economic Development Agency will have a big role to play in driving demand for local tourism, attracting new capital city and supporting those businesses as we come out of the pandemic. They will deliver a series of programs that strengthen the Brisbane brand and drive awareness and demand for Brisbane as a place to visit, do business and invest. We will look to secure major events to Brisbane in domestic market and further afield as restrictions begin to ease and borders reopen. Major events play a critical role in profiling the city and showcasing everything we have to offer. While measures put in place to limit the spread of COVID at this time have put a hold on these plans, we are well prepared for the future and have a series of confirmed events later this year. Of course, as the region's regional tourism organisation supported by Tourism Events Queensland, the Brisbane Economic Development Agency is working closely with local tourism operators and external organisations to implement reattraction strategies and coordinated marketing campaigns that drive tourism and trade opportunities in our city. Now is the time to focus in our backyard to ensure our local economy is best positioned to face the challenges over the next two years as we rebuild and thrive once we are past the recovery phase. And Brisbane Economic Development Agency has been tasked with exactly that, to focus their efforts on getting the support that the Brisbane businesses need into the Brisbane Business Hub as an important mentoring and business service area running to help as many businesses as we can through this time. Through a series of targeted support programs, industry development workshops and seminars, we are able to focus on growing our existing businesses here in Brisbane, but also create new and innovative jobs. And when we get there, look further afield to develop key priority industries when we can trade internationally again, where Brisbane already has a competitive advantage, which present the best opportunity for growth in the current economic climate. It is very, very clear that the retasking of the Brisbane Economic Development Agency is what Brisbane puts Brisbane above all the other cities across Australia as having the best economic recovery action plan going forward as we come out of our restricted lockdowns. But before I finish, what would the opposition do when it comes to delivering economic support through this city? It is very, very clear. And let me make it known, Mr Chair, I am sure we will hear from the other side this afternoon that they had no idea about any cuts that may have been happening in Brisbane marketing, even though I clearly answered all of those questions on Monday afternoon, whether they were listening or not. This administration, who developed and supported Brisbane marketing from the beginning and now Brisbane EDA to drive the economy for over a decade, stand beside them now and task them with the job of supporting our businesses. What does Labor say? In his budget reply speech last year, Councillor Cummings said, Madam Chairman, let's turn to another body that Labor would disband and make significant savings, and that is Brisbane Marketing. Same. Yeah, if yeah. they were voted in in March, they would not even exist. So I do not want to hear one word about programs that are being refocused and retasked in the Brisbane Economic Development Agencies from the hypocrites that sit on the other side of the chamber. Quote, Councillor Cumming, Leader of the Opposition, Budget Reply Speech 2018, Brisbane Marketing Con Job is perpetrated by the Lord Mayor and the Responsible Vet Chair, Councillor Adams. Yeah, yeah. They don't know. It, and then you got they it. don't know how to run the economy, but they'll sit there and they'll send barbs over, totally opposite to what they have held firm on for the last ten years. They don't support the economy. They don't support Brisbane Economic Development Agency. This administration is getting on to strive towards our goal of creating the most business friendly city in Australia. Here, here. Because Councillor Cassidy. Thanks, um, thanks very much, Chair. And I um, would remind Councillor Adams that the election's over. We can be positive and work in a constructive way, Councillor Adams, through you, Chair. But uh, 
would love to see the lead, Councillor Cassidy. Just no, 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 um, Chair, this is one of the programs that we should have seen a seismic shift in priorities for this administration. Uh, we have before us an unprecedented crisis heading our way, not something seen in modern Brisbane. Uh, we had the chance for this budget to refocus the way Brisbane City Council deals with economic development. This year should have been all about economic recovery, but we are not seeing enough of this, Chair. While in this program, revenue has taken a very modest hit for the year ahead, expense in this program, economic development, is down significantly. The Deputy Mayor put that down to the lower funding to the new Economic Development Agency, due mainly, in her own words, to less international student work for that agency. But there is a different story hidden away here in the Budget Papers Chair. We have always called for Brisbane marketing to be reborn into something much more useful for business and industry here in Brisbane, and we don't shy away from that. In the past, the best way I've heard Brisbane marketing described by people who have had to deal with Brisbane marketing is that Brisbane marketing was very good at marketing Brisbane marketing, and that was about it. So we have said for a very long time that Brisbane needed uh, what Brisbane needed was to refocus the work of this area of council to genuine economic development. We've been saying that for years now, but the year 2020 brings that into particularly sharp focus, Chair. I had hoped, Chair, that hearing the news of the new so-called Brisbane Economic Development Agency would mean a better approach. However, what we know is that is this agency is just Brisbane Marketing rebranded with less funding and less staff and now we find out today, less Brisbane greeters. This service should have been brought in house and have the might of council focused on economic development here in Brisbane instead of outsourcing it all the time. Again, this was an opportunity not just to streamline the way economic development is done here in Brisbane, but also rise to the occasion, making the conscious decision to use this unique set of circumstances to say, we will do things differently here in Brisbane. We will make our council one that is focused fairly and squarely on the economic recovery of our city and our region. But again, like most of this budget chair, it's a massive missed opportunity. We know the recovery of our communities to something uh, bigger and better uh, and more unique uh, and resilient than what we saw pre-COVID will happen in our suburbs if it happens at all. So. Um, so often the forgotten suburbs under this administration, but the resources in economic development just aren't there. In the program called Growing Brisbane's Economy, there are just two staff. In the program Enabling Economic Growth, there are just over seven full-time equivalents. In the program called Thriving Suburbs and Business, there are just five and a half full-time equivalents. And in the program delivering world-class economic precincts, there are just over 11 full-time equivalent positions. Now, in the new uh, Brisbane Economic Development Agency, which is, of course, external to council, there are, well, the Deputy Mayor said there were 92 full-time positions in the information session, but then went on to say there would be significant job losses to come over the next month or so because funding to that agency is down around $5 million. To you, Adams. Claim to be misrepresented. Noted. Uh, and she said in the information sessions, Chair, that uh, the uh, new Brisbane Economic Development Agency um, had only found out about their funding cuts on Wednesday when the Lord Mayor handed down his budget and they would have some very difficult decisions to make around staffing. Uh, and the CEO of that organisation confirmed that all those staff are on common law contracts uh, and many of them would be going. So something isn't quite right here, Chair, when we hear this rhetoric from the administration but we see the reality uh, in the budget papers. There is no clear direction that the new so-called Economic Development Agency will have a suburban focus at all, just like the old Brisbane marketing failed to have a genuine citywide approach. And the support out there really isn't much for small business. The direct support for small businesses seems to be business as usual this budget, 
which is disappointing given we should be anything but business as usual as we emerge from COVID-19. The support for startups in struggling high streets is just $2,000 for rent. I know in uh, my community down in Sandgate, that will get you a shop for a couple of weeks probably. Uh, there is also a, a $50,000 fund for shop owners to get some council funding to do things like painting their shop fronts. And that has to be shared across Brisbane's almost 200 suburbs. So again, the rhetoric is certainly there, but the reality of this budget is something much, much sadder. There is no focus on the forgotten suburbs of Brisbane chair. There are no new grant programs of any note. There is no investment in the future with skills programs just all lumped in together and treated as an afterthought uh, in this budget. The city of suburbs that we have has so much potential, but with such little support from this administration. We should be a driving force in our suburban shopping strips, our historic industrial precincts and our emerging manufacturing hubs chair. But under the LNP here in Brisbane, it's got to be glossy and glittery for them to even care. For them, high-end retail, sure, uh, but the suburbs is a hard pass for the LNP. Like so much of this budget chair, it's lost opportunity that we will never get back, uh, which is a real shame for Brisbane. Further speakers? Lord Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr Chair. I have to say that has made my day. Um, for Councillor Cassidy, a classic schoolyard bully, to come in here and say, oh, we all need to work together. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Point of order to you, Councillor Strunk. Yes, on the 6th of June, you um, uh, told us that we were not supposed I to- I appreciate what you, I understand the point of order you're gonna make. Lord no. Mayor, can I please ask you to withdraw the term bully and choose another one? Point of order, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Point of order for you, Councillor Adams. I'm sorry, Lord Mayor, but my claim to be misrepresented was... Oh, excuse me. That's my error. Uh, you missed that. Uh, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Mr Chair. I just wanted to make it very clear. I never said that there would be significant job losses through Brisbane EDA. So, Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you. Uh, look, if, if you find that offensive, I will withdraw it. Um, uh, but it is just incredible that uh, Councillor Cassidy would come in here and make such an incredible statement when uh, all he does is snipe and be negative and attack. Uh, and as recently as uh, a matter of days ago, he was repeating lines from his failed $2.1 million election campaign and then says, oh, the election's over. But Mr. Chair, we're here to talk about the budget. We're here to talk about uh, economic development. Uh, and this is the reason why I wanted this program debated first, uh, because it is so critical this year, uh, more than any year. Now, obviously, this, this budget is not in any way a normal budget, uh, but there is one thing that is normal about it. Uh, there is one thing that is an ongoing theme about it, and that is this is a continuing the stream of balanced budgets uh, from this LNP administration. And this will be the 17th balanced budget in a row. There is no level of government anywhere else that has achieved that. Uh, and certainly uh, Labor uh, have made it clear that they don't think that uh, budget surpluses or balanced budgets are um, a priority for them. Uh, but the first thing we are doing is bringing in a balanced and strong budget. Why are we doing this? Uh, as I said in my budget speech, we're doing this so that we can do more tomorrow. We're doing this so we can provide more support to the community going forward. Because when you run up deficits, they catch up with you and you end up having to uh, go backwards each year. And we're making sure that we can go forwards in the future by running a strong balanced budget and by targeting the support that we provide. Like the now, it's important to note that of all the taxation collected in Australia, uh, across the three levels of government, local government collects 3.6% of the total taxation. Uh, in other words, uh, the other levels of government collect over 96% of the taxation. So the role of local government is, is not to hand out uh, billions of dollars in cash stimulus, to throw money at problems, uh, 
Uh, the role of local government is to deliver services, to build and to provide targeted support. And that is exactly what we're doing in this budget. And so we don't have the federal or state governments uh, billions or hundreds of millions to, to hand away to people uh, in giveaways. That is not our role. And I made it consistently clear that the best way we can help is to build things, build infrastructure and support jobs and to provide very targeted support where it will make the most difference. We've done that in various ways in this budget and this program is a critical part of that approach. But I wanted to take you back because it's important perspective to the last budget, which sets an important scene for this program in particular. In my very first budget, I announced an ambition to make Brisbane Australia's most small business friendly city. And at that time, I did a couple of things. Uh, shortly after becoming Lord Mayor, uh, I introduced a budget with fee reductions for small businesses. And there was a $2 million fund set aside to reduce fees affecting small businesses. That was before coronavirus. That was before any of the challenges that we uh, see at the moment. But I also introduced for the first time a local buy policy. Council does more than a billion dollars worth of procurement each year. And I think this year it'll be about $1.3 billion. Spanish, Swedish. No, 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 no interjections, please. Lord man. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and this year we'll be doing about $1.3 billion worth of procurement uh, from memory. And I introduced for the very first time a local preference policy and a local buy target so that we would see a target of 80% of our procurement uh, being with local businesses here in Brisbane and South East Queensland. Uh, and I have to say, uh, this is something that has been incredibly well received because while we can deliver targeted initiatives, um, having a $1.3 billion procurement each year or thereabouts and using that, gearing that up and leveraging that to support local businesses that makes a real difference. And so uh, the last figures that I was given um, were to the end of May uh, this year, and we had achieved 79% of uh, the spend and contracts with local Southeast Queensland businesses, uh, which was around $900 million worth of contracts and work going to local businesses. Now that makes a difference. And that was something that wasn't happening before. That was something where uh, council had a previous position of being quite agnostic about who the contracts went to. We changed that. And now more than $900 million worth of contracts have gone to local businesses, supporting local jobs. The flow on benefit of that is just incredible. Uh, there are people right across this city uh, who, whose jobs, whose livelihoods, whose employments, whose businesses, are supported by those council contracts. And that is a fantastic thing and something that we should all be proud of, something that we want to continue. But if we fast forward then to uh, the coronavirus challenge that we are all experiencing, council moved incredibly swiftly to do a number of things. First of all, uh, we waived all uh, fees associated with uh, business in this city uh, and that includes, um, we announced a $7.9 million package. Uh, and that includes anywhere from uh, licensing permits. So things like footpath dining, uh, advertising permits, building permits, filming approvals, uh, community organization leases and licenses, uh, licensing, licensing and compliance fees and permits, uh, venue hire, and even, uh, some waste disposal charges as well. There's a whole range of fees. There's 16, from memory, 16 different categories of fees that we wiped off immediately. We did that uh, decisively upfront, uh, and this budget will fund another six months of those fee waivers. Uh, so business in Brisbane and the touch points that they have with council, uh, we are certainly not adding to their costs during a difficult time. And so we had from March 
until the 30th of June waived. And now we will see from July to December uh, waived as well. And that means a lot to local business people. For the people that do have to apply for licenses and permits through council, uh, this does make a difference. I was contacted recently by uh, a local business operator uh, who was running a, um, an incredible small business. She was a sole operator. And this decision that we made to waive the fees had saved her $745 in a permit fee. Now that is, that's significant for a small business operator. That's significant for a sole trader. And the, there's examples like this right across the city of a whole range of permits and business fees that have been waived and reduced. Now, obviously, we expect our city to recover well. We expect our economy to recover well, and we will be part of that by providing that targeted support. Uh, and we're looking forward to going into 2021 uh, with the recovery underway and growing stronger. Uh, but we will continue to introduce targeted initiatives. Now, Councillor Cassidy was um, quite dismissive of some of the uh, initiatives that have been introduced. And I've got to say, when you target something, Councillor Cassidy, through you, Mr. Chair, the first thing you need to do is to determine its effectiveness. There's a lot of good ideas floating around out there about how we can help. But the first thing we need to do is ground truth, the effectiveness of these initiatives. And so when we start something, and Councillor Adams is very aware of this, we generally put some seed funding in, we test it out and see how effective it is. And if it works well, and if it provides good support, then we add to that program uh, and gear it up. And so there's a number of initiatives in here like that, uh, and including thing like, uh, things like um, the pop-up businesses in vacant shops. Uh, that's just one example where there's a relatively small amount of funding put into that uh, initiative up front. If it is effective, then we can really gear it up and make it a much bigger initiative across the city. But first, we need to determine that it works. So targeting, testing, ground truthing is really important. But the other thing that's important is you don't solve an economic crisis by putting on more public right. servants. Lord Mayor, your time has expired. Further speakers? Councillor Johnston. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I rise to speak on uh, program seven, economic development. Um, we don't normally get to debate this program. And I'm sure when uh, Councillor Adams and the Lord Mayor cooked this up a few days ago, bringing this program forward for debate, uh, they thought it was a really good idea. Well, I guess that uh, that's got a bit pear-shaped this morning, um, given the latest revelations. Oh, and the Lord Mayor's gone. He's off, he's gone. Uh, given the latest revelations uh, that were uh, on radio this morning. So let's be clear uh, about what's going on with this. Order, to you, Lord Mayor. I'm not gone. Oh, oh excellent. <coughs> Thank you. I'm so pleased right, to hear well, Okay. Councillor Johnson, back, uh, back to the topic, please. Thank you. I'm so pleased the Lord Mayor is still here because I do have some criticism, but then I have some ideas. So firstly, let me start by saying um, the following. The biggest achievement of this Lord Mayor in Program 7 is to create a new name for a new part of council called the Brisbane Economic Development Agency. So that is what he hang his hat on in the, his budget speech. That is essentially what this program does. It creates a new bureaucracy. That new bureaucracy is going to spend $25.7 million this year on a range of programs and is only expected to generate $242,000 in revenue. It is a massive cost centre for council. Um, I'm a little bit interested in the fact that um, it, it's clearly just going to be um, the agency that just spends council's money on, on marketing and advertising. Um, but I can say from listening to the radio this morning that I think the wrong person is in the job as the CEO, he does not have a good grasp on um, the expenditure of funds that have been uh, happening in Brisbane marketing. And I particularly uh, want to speak briefly about um, the Brizzy Greeters program. 
So as we heard on radio this morning when we all woke up, um, yesterday the CEO sent out an email to our 200-odd volunteers, hardworking Brisbane people. I've got lots of them in my ward and they're all over Brisbane, saying that their program was being cut. Now, he dissembled on radio for quite some time this morning about how it would be transferred elsewhere, but he couldn't say where, how, um, implied that it may become a commercial service. Point of order to you, Councillor Adams. Uh, Can I ask a question of the chair, please? Um, In light of your... In light of your recent rulings, when a councillor is not actually telling the truth, how can I raise that in the chambers? Uh, you would um, you would advise a colleague and have them raise it in a speech later in the debate. Thank you. Councillor Johnston. <laughs> uh, everyone in Brisbane on ABC Radio this morning heard it and it was a train wreck of a radio interview, I can tell you. I was listening in the car on the way to my office. So let's be clear, Brisbane Council has cut um, a small but hugely useful program out of this new agency that it's created. So the first thing the bureaucracy has done has cut a volunteer program that delivers a wonderful service to Brisbane residents and visitors. Um, Now, in past budgets, when it's been a line item, it's cost about $180,000 a year to run. Presumably insurance, T-shirts, there's some staff costs attached to coordinating the program. It's a tiny, tiny program. If we could break this budget down and find out how much this new bureaucracy is going to spend on marketing, it would be in the millions. So um, fair enough, the Lord Mayor needs to make savings. I understand that. And in my budget submission this year, I did suggest a few places for savings. Um, But... Cutting an essential volunteer program that was started when you were the deputy mayor and now the Lord Mayor, um, it just seems to be counterproductive to me. We are going to need all people on deck to help when our city reopens um, to visitors. And it is so important that we do not lose um, the wonderful uh, collegiate fellowship and um, positivity that the Brisbane greeters bring. They take tours through the Walter Taylor Bridge. They take people into City Hall, into the laneways, into the malls. They are fantastic. So, Lord Mayor, here is my positive suggestion. You have two excellent agencies under Council's control that could administer this program. The first and the best place for them, I think, is in the Brisbane Museum. It could easily be run out of the Brisbane Museum. And I urge you to use some of the $3 million in your COVID slush fund, um, which is in another program we'll debate, um, to uh, retask the Brisbane greeters under Brisbane City Council's banner as part of the Museum of Brisbane. It is the perfect spot for them. Secondly, if that doesn't work, and I can't see why it wouldn't, Um, The Powerhouse Museum is an excellent alternative as well. Um, With a small budget allocation, they can continue to offer the great service that they always have. Um, So let me just say, um, finding out, um, you know, that you're cutting things like this Um, and... I just want to make make a general comment. Um, Can I just ask you and all councillors, please refrain from uh, directing your comments directly to a colleague and please um, advi- uh, please put them through the chair. Um, just a general statement, um, Councillor Johnston. I know. The lo- yes, I apologise. Um, sooner we're back in the chamber, the better. Uh, the um, There is a way to fix this, and I urge you to do it. Um, secondly, uh, the by local policy um, the Lord Mayor was talking about, what a farce this is. Um, The the biggest project that this city has that it is delivering, um, the Brisbane Metro, which we now know has blown out to $1.3 billion, the $1.2 billion allocated this year and in the forwards, and the $112 million already spent to date. We've engaged a Spanish contracting company and a Swedish uh, engineering company to deliver the project. Now, yes, they're going to employ local people, great, but they will bring senior management in from their own countries and their own teams. 
Um, and the profits from this project will go back to those companies. So the Lord Mayor is saying one thing, but when it comes to um, the major projects of this city, he is issuing the biggest contracts the city has this year to foreign-owned companies, Spanish and Swedish. I mean, just last week um, we had a debate in the council about how many I can't even remember what it was, um, the, whatever the Swedish currency is. I mean, we had a specific debate about it. It's, it's astonishing that the Lord Mayor wants to talk about his buy local program when he has ignored um, the Australian engineering skill set um, needed to deliver this project and has gone with a Spanish, two foreign, two foreign companies. Now, that's just appalling. Now, I appreciate, as with all engineering companies, there will be subcontractors. A lot of uh, people are going to, local people will get jobs out of this. Um, but the biggest issue here is the Lord Mayor has said he's allocating um, projects to local companies. And the biggest project this city has on offer this year is going to two foreign companies. So let me be clear. Um, I've always had problems with Brisbane marketing. Um, it is essentially the LMP slush fund, and that is how it is used. Um, you know, they fund their small business activities where, you know, they trot out the chair and the information technology officer and everybody has a drink and, you know, they chat, chat, chat. Um, but I certainly have serious concerns with the structure that is being set up, um, which will be impenetrable to us as councillors and unaccountable to the rate payers of Brisbane. And if the CEO was anything to go by this morning, um, he does not have a good grasp of his uh, portfolio. Um, he was unable to provide simple figures when asked um, by uh, the radio presenter. Um, and they're figures that are available in, in council budgets if you have a quick look. So I just have very serious concerns that um, this program is more about spin than substance. Um, that sort of reflects, I think, how it is managed um, by the chair. And I, I am extremely concerned when we say things like uh, there's 6.4, yeah, $6.4 million for the visitor economy. So that'll be to bring in tourists, whether they're domestic, um, international, but we can't find a little bit of money for a volunteer program to welcome them to Brisbane. Shame on you. Further speakers, Councillor Owen. Thank you, Mr Chair. And I too would like to speak on Program 7. Can I commence by just providing some clarification in regards to the Brisbane greeters? Yesterday, an email was sent to them to let them know that the program was being reviewed. And if they had any ideas, to pass them back to us. The Brisbane Greeters Program is purely in hibernation until restrictions are lifted further. And we will take this time to That's make sure great. we find okay. a way that our beloved greeters may continue in our city. Now, other councillors don't seem to be getting a grasp on the fact that the Brisbane Economic Development Agency has a very specific remit and that that remit is to focus on the economic development recovery for our city. And there is going to be work undertaken with tourism operators to see who would like to take on the Brisbane greeters and maybe the volunteers that would like to organise a group to run it. But we will not let our Brisbane greeters be hung out to dry as, as insinuated by opposition right. councillors and the, the independent councillor. They will continue the, the uh, program. Councillor when... Cumming, sorry, Councillor Owen, Councillor Cumming, please cease interjecting. You've interjected on half a dozen occasions. I've named you twice. If you do so again, I will move to the formal warning process. Councillor Owen. Thank you, Mr Chair. And this is what happens. They don't want the facts to get in the way of their storytelling. That's what they do over and over again in the hope that mistruths can then be regurgitated over and over and in a new sense of what the reality is. But let me say this. The facts are 
that there are many tour operators who have indicated their interests of working with our Brisbane Greeters program and incorporating that. But this is the time now for us to review where we go forward because the Brisbane Economic Development Agency has been set up specifically to address the economic recovery for our city. Now, Economic viability is a key priority across all industry sectors. And we are now in a time of unprecedented challenges. We need to know how we can support our local visitor economy with opportunities in our city to continue to make sure that Brisbane is a prosperous and enviable lifestyle and use these particular opportunities to make sure people are touring at home. The global pandemic and the restrictions that it's imposed have put a temporary pause on much of our local economy. But this administration has a focus on a balanced and strong budget to sustain the viability of our city in the long term. And that's what we have to be focused on. Few sectors have been untouched by this pandemic. The heaviest impacts have certainly been felt in the retail, hospitality and tourism sectors. Business viability is difficult at any time, but more so now in, when we're dealing with predictions in regards to the uncertainty which has surrounded this pandemic. By the end of 2019, Brisbane recorded its largest increase in visitor growth, attracting 9.7 million visitors from both domestic and international locations, with a combined overnight expenditure of $8.2 billion in the previous 12 months. Brisbane was on a trajectory, but this has been specifically impacted by COVID-19. And I think that's a fact that everybody acknowledges. Significant work does need to be done to strengthen both consumer and business confidence and also in the longer term to revive destination demand and raise locally the profile of Brisbane in our priority markets. But this will also be further restricted by travel advisories and international border restrictions, as well as state to state border restrictions. The Lord Mayor has announced that Brisbane marketing is being repurposed from um, to form the Brisbane Economic Development Agency. And that is specifically in response to the impacts of the coronavirus and to help our local economy remain sustainable going forward. We need to be razor sharp in our focus right now to ensure our local economy is best positioned to face the challenges over the next two years as we rebuild. This is the rebuilding phase and then we've got the long-term strategic phase. So in responding to the new economic climate, the BEDA has reviewed and refined its work to focus squarely on those programs that will make the best impact for Brisbane and provide the best value for our residents. The agency will partner with key stakeholders to deliver the Visitor Economy 2031 Visitor Vision for Brisbane Region for our visitors, which was launched in September 2019 in collaboration with the government and industry partners with a key focus on expanding visitor expenditure and generating long-term economic growth. It is important to plan because despite the current circumstances with restrictions on visitors, we must be prepared for recovery and visitor demand in the future. The vision aims to enhance the contribution of the visitor economy to the region's lifestyle, environment and economy through capturing greater value for communities across the entire city and sustainably managing growth. It is also about encouraging locals to support locally based opportunities. Brisbane Economic Development Agencies will continue to review the Visitor Economy 2031 vision to ensure it remains relevant to the economic recovery conditions. And I don't think anybody in this place has got a crystal ball, so we don't know what's going to happen going forward, but we must be prepared as best we can. 
BEDA will work alongside Brisbane City Council and the Economic Recovery Task Force to deliver a series of high impact economic growth initiatives. This is the time to focus on our own backyard to rebuild our local economy and ensure we are in the best position to thrive once we are past this recovery phase. The visitor economy comprising leisure tourism, major events, business events, they are all major contributors to economic activity in Brisbane, supporting a large number of local businesses. The VDA will de drive demand for local tourism industry by strengthening local in-region spend prior to domestic and international borders fully opening to encourage residents to get out and rediscover their own city and support local businesses. The VFR market, which is the visiting friends and relatives market, makes up about 40% of all domestic visitors to Brisbane and 31% of international visitors. As a former university lecturer, I know how much the VFR market has been tied to the international student market, with families often coming to Brisbane to join their student family members. This market has not just been impacted, it has been wiped out temporarily. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the many multicultural organisations who have supported our international students during this COVID-19 um, time. This will ensure that the sense of family that has been perpetuated throughout our city will promote goodwill for the long term when international VFR market reignites. And it will, we know it will. The only question is, we don't know when. Extending the VFR market is an important element in increasing the overall size of the Brisbane visitor economy. BEDA will run in the future distinct campaigns targeting this market to raise local resident awareness and intent to visit local tourism, hospitality and related businesses. This administration is about supporting the Lord Mayor's Buy Local campaign. And throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, I continuously promoted support for local businesses and promoted those businesses that were still open and operating, even if they were doing so in a changed manner. Upon the easing of restrictions and the opening of the interstate borders, BEDA will focus its activities on tactical marketing and communication in order to position our city as a place to visit and do business in Australia. The BEDA will partner with trade, business, media and partners to encourage visitors to stay longer and visit and explore the entire Brisbane region. So for all the claims that have been made about the repurposing of Brisbane marketing to BEDA, what the, this new economic recovery agency is going to do... Your time has expired. Further speakers? Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'll be speaking on Program 7 today, Economic Development. Well, Mr Chair, where to start? Uh, this program and information session was very interesting. Uh, lots of words used by Councillor Adams like uh, stepped out of, uh, pivot, we've got realignment. When you look at this program, Mr Chair, that's actually quite accurate. Uh, no doubt, quite politely put by Councillor Adams, I would say this program has been completely uh, decimated with the complete scrapping of multiple program outcomes like Program 7.3, uh, City of Many Skills gone, Program 7.5, delivering uh, the Brisbane 2022 New World City Action Plan gone, uh, together with its 11 Vision 2022 projects, which included uh, things like the Asia Pacific Screen Awards, assisting small and medium enterprises, Brisbane region approach, Brisbane's growth sectors, championing Brisbane, investment attraction, leisure, tourism, convention and major events, positioning the B&E brand, uh, diverse districts and productive precincts, startups and innovation, gone, talent and skills, Team Brisbane, all gone. And today we hear uh, the Brisbane Greeters Program, an iconic and much loved service to this city, gone. Uh, they have been hung out to dry. The only person 
not grasping the importance of them, uh, to quote you, uh, Councillor Owen, is the LMP. We have launched a petition today uh, to save them and to bring them in-house into BCC, similar uh, to what uh, we've already heard Councillor Johnson discuss. Point of, point of order to you, Councillor Adams. Will Councillor Cook take a question? Councillor no, Cook, thank you. Take I don't a have a bit of time. No, Councillor Cook has declined. Councillor Cook. So Council, with their $3.1 billion budget, uh, you know, if we value them uh, as... Councillor Owen has said, if we uh, think that they are a valuable resource for our city, we should support them. And uh, to hear some of those comments by Councillor Owen today was just quite frankly very disappointing, Mr Chair. Um, and if her and her colleagues would like to support this petition, we look forward to them signing and we look forward to them supporting this petition when it does come to the Chamber. Uh, we would love to see them support that group today which is well within their power, Mr Chair. Now, collectively, uh, Mr Chair, these programs had around 22 million that was projected to be invested uh, in those activities in the 2021 financial year, gone. Then we see the replacement uh, of those programs with the shiny new Brisbane Economic Development Agency with a, well, slashed $20 million budget. This is the new version of Brisbane Marketing for those who are playing along at home. Uh, not confusing at all, Mr Chair, for regular residents trying to follow the budget allocations from year to year, or more importantly, Mr Chair, the cuts. So this program has been sliced and diced so much that you may be lured into a false sense of security that the program will solve Brisbane's economic recovery out of COVID. That's simply not going to be the case, Mr Chair. Uh, that's particularly relevant for the smaller businesses in the suburbs uh, that Councillor Cassidy has already spoken about. When we look closely at the Brisbane Economic Development Agency with its uh, cut $20 million budget, that's $5 million less than last year, Mr. Tw Mr Chair, a 20% cut, you will note that a large chunk of that will be spent on marketing and advertising. No surprises there. This Lord Mayor and LNP Council will do whatever it takes to self-promote at ratepayers' expense, even if it means slashing small programs and projects uh, run by volunteers like the Brisbane Greeters Project. We had uh, 100 volunteers. We heard some of them on the radio this morning, Mr Chair, across 20 languages gone. This isn't some sort of uh, temporary pause. It's been cut. The email was very clear. They are gone. Yes, they might say that they're looking for a new partner, but the reality is they are not coming back in their current form supported by this council, and they should be. And that's what we want to see, and that's the petition that we're calling on today, Mr Chair. So we know that their last year was over 9.7 million visitors to our city. And moving forward, as we move towards economic recovery, we want to see the return of these visitors, of course. But sadly, Mr Chair, there's not going to be anyone here to greet them. Over half of the new Economic Development Agency budget, over $13 million, will be spent on destination marketing and visitor economy projects in the next 12 months. What this is code for is more advertising and marketing, more glossy brochures, more ads, not genuine direct support for small businesses. Councillor Adams confirms that not one cent of that would be used for grants or support. This is purely a marketing exercise of Order. millions and millions of dollars at great pay's expense. Claim to be misrepresented. Noted. The rest, the rest of the money will go to paying the board hundreds of thousands of dollars at a time when local businesses, the actual heart and soul of our city, are closing and people are struggling to make ends meet. Shame on you. But don't worry, Brisbane, we will be well advertised. But again, no one here to greet them. Speaking of grants, Councillor Adams couldn't confirm what grants, if any, will survive in this budget program. 
Of the many Lord Merrill grants that used to exist in this area, none of them have been confirmed nor amounts allocated. Okay. Point order to you, Councillor Adams. Claim to be misrepresented. Noted. If they are reinstated, Mr Chair, we would be more than happy uh, for them to return without the Lord Merrill title, of course, uh, but the support they provide to small enterprise and entrepreneurs is critical. The only grant programs confirmed is the Shopfront Activation and Shopfront Amenity Grants, which are a couple of thousand dollars. And to date, Mr Chair, only three have been signed in the entire city. Three, around $12,000 out of the $47 million in this program. Mr Chair, city safety also falls into this program and I'm sure for many in the chamber, there has been positive feedback about the network of city safe cameras. This is a core council project and we have seen very practical outcomes as a result of their instalment throughout the city. We know that there are 132 locations with closed circuit feed cameras across the city, but predominantly in the CBD. This year, uh, Councillor Adams has confirmed there will be no new sites and almost the entire city safe budget will be spent on bollards for the inner city. I think that some of our suburban precincts would value the opportunity to be included in future consideration uh, for the city safe cameras and broader safety upgrades, particularly given the investment we are seeing in village precincts upgrades, Mr Chair. Residents have a right to feel safe and particularly where we are encouraging them to gather in our suburban precincts. So, Mr Chair, in summary, slicing, dicing, cuts, rebranding, and no genuine commitment to truly advance the interests of our city at perhaps the most challenging time in our recent history. That sums up this program area and puts into pretty stark contrast the values of this council and this LMP, Lord Mayor. No genuine commitment to our struggling industries and no genuine support for our small businesses in the suburbs. Thank you. Councillor Adams, you had two items of misrepresentation. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, Councillor uh, Cook said on the first one that not one cent was being spent on grants in Brisbane Economic Development Agency. That is not what is said. It said they are reviewing their program to see what grants may be delivered this year. And the second one was that no grants were confirmed this year through economic development uh, through the economic development team. And then she went on to list the grants that we are de delivering. So also incorrect. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Further speakers, Councillor Allen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, I uh, join the debate on Program 7 um, with specific reference to Strategy 7.5.1, Economic Recovery and Revitalisation, and the uh, Brisbane Economic Development Agency. And um, Before I sort of get into the, the detail of the program, I did want to commence by uh, placing on the record and uh, conveying my appreciation and admiration to the resolve of businesses right across Brisbane facing the continued challenges of COVID-19. The economic impacts of this pandemic and the flow on effects um, are deep. You know, clearly the uh, pandemic is impacting the solvency of businesses. It's also impacting the employment of locals. It impacts on their families, and it has a broader wash on effect to the whole community. And many business owners obviously feel a very deep responsibility for their staff. And accordingly, while business owners are concerned about the impacts on their own families, they also feel an additional burden for their staff and their families. So it's a very heavy burden for business owners to bear. And as a local government, council remains but one of the many stakeholders supporting the broader economic recovery. And while we don't have the big economic levers that are available to our state and federal counterparts who have the finances and resources to instigate wide-scale programs of relief and economic stimulus, Council must play its part and has certainly identified a wide range of initiatives where we can support the business community. Already, we have provided a range of fee waivers, rebates and incentives to support the business community rates rebates to uh, residents and businesses has commenced 
and will be continued until the end of the year, as will business fee waivers. Our $840 million infrastructure spend will also provide support to local suppliers and underpin jobs. These are the sorts of measures that make a real impact right here on the ground. We don't have Councillor Cassidy's crystal ball to foresee the economic future, but we rely on engagement with industry who tell us they're struggling. We know that billions of dollars have been wiped from the economy, an increase in un un unemployment of over 6% and countless business closures. That's why we move swiftly to ensure that measures were and continue to be in place for business survival and betterment. Labor's approach to economic recovery, other than indolence, is to spend, spend, spend. And Councillor Cook's contribution this morning just highlights that. Every point made was about spending more and more on more programs with no recognition of the impact of COVID on council's finances. It's an extraordinarily one-sided and naive view of the world. And all I can say is, you know, with these half-baked blind um, perspectives on the budget, businesses and residents of Brisbane can be extremely pleased that it's this administration that's currently steering the city through what is one of the most challenging times in its history. And I'd also add that Councillor Cassidy's contribution to the debate this morning was really interesting again. And we spoke about this previously about plans and vision. So some of the points Councillor Cassidy made were, here was an opportunity for a better approach to do something different, bigger, better, and more unique. But there was nothing. It was criticism, but no ideas or visions of their own. So these are just platitudes and they're not a constructive contribution to this debate. So moving on to I the recovery task force to help um, coordinate council's response to the economic recovery, the Lord Mayor established the economic recovery task force in April. And since that time, the task force has engaged with a range of stakeholders through meetings with key industry bodies, meetings and input from business owners, a business survey and submission process, plus constant review of research and articles. Some of the industry groups that have engaged, we have engaged to date include the National Retailers Association, the Restaurant and Caterers Association, Chamber of Commerce and Industry Queensland, the Property Council, UDIA, the Australian Industry Group, the REIQ, to name a few. So engaging with these groups has informed Council's thinking and helped us to develop a sound understanding of the unique challenges that various industry segments are facing. And this in turn has helped us to identify opportunities where Council can assist the recovery and help tailor the Council response accordingly. To date, we have identified a range of Council initiatives that will be rolled out to support the business community, including the Brisbane Business Hub, which is outlined here in 7.5.1, and business assistance programs, uh, which will provide selected coaching and advice programs. We'll also be looking to reduce red tape. Uh, we're looking at green building incentives. We're looking to establish localised marketing campaigns to bring uh, shoppers back to our key precincts and we'll continue to look for procurement enhancements. So the range of activities or initiatives that we're looking to roll out to support the uh, Brisbane bus uh, business community are quite wide. Um, now, a number of the um, economic recovery task force initiatives will be managed by the Brisbane um, Economic Development Agency. And if I just touch upon that briefly, the um, Brisbane Economic Development Agency, or BEDA for short, um, as you know, was previously Brisbane Marketing, and it had a heavy international focus to attract international tourism and international business activity. And given the restrictions on international travel, their previous mandate uh, is not well aligned to our current environment. Accordingly, they're going to be more locally focused and Councillor Adams touched upon this earlier. So both the Lord Mayor and Deputy Mayor, who has oversight of economic development in Brisbane, have responded what I believe promptly and appropriately in reshaping the scope and focus of VEDA. 
The Lord Mayor recently announced the retasking of the Brisbane Economic Development Agency to focus its activities on local uh, business and to support their recovery plans and obviously to bring investment to Brisbane in a post-COVID environment. And I think that's an admirable and uh, obviously very logical um, focus to have. Now, in the context of BEDA, they have a very sound understanding of the local economic landscape and they have terrific networks in the business community. And I think BEDA are ideally placed to successfully pivot their focus to the local economy and drive tangible economic improvement. Uh, BEDA will also work in conjunction with Council's economic development team and uh, will also be working with the Economic Recovery Task Force to roll out a range of programs and initiatives via the Brisbane Business Hub. And uh, part of the activities in the Brisbane Business Hub will include a suite of coaching and advice programs to support business through the recovery phase. And if I just touch upon the Brisbane Business Hub itself, this is being uh, developed to support local business uh, through this obviously very difficult time. And uh, they will, uh, BETA will be responsible for establishing and managing the uh, Brisbane Business Hub, and that will be in the capital uh, venue in Queen Street Mall. Uh, this venue is a terrific venue. It's extremely well located for accessibility. Uh, the space lends itself to a wide range of uses through which support can be provided to the business community. Uh, the hub will be able to provide support to a range of businesses, ranging from startup businesses through to more established operations looking for a bit of extra support and guidance. The Brisbane Business Hub, in conjunction with third party groups, will provide coaching, training programs, webinars, support materials, workspaces, seminars, networking events, forums, trade events, display opportunities. A pretty much an endless list of opportunities support the, uh, to support the Brisbane uh, business communities. Uh, these services will be delivered through both physical and virtual means with web content and educational material made available to local businesses and will complement the range of business focused services and products that are already provided by council and the uh, Business in Brisbane section of the Council website already provides a significant range of information and resources to support the local business community, but obviously we want to do more and uh, the Brisbane Business Hub will support both new and e existing businesses to provide a central location to help businesses engage, open, recover, transform and grow. Now touching upon some of the uh, business assistance programs that we're seeking to launch, um, they'll cover a range of uh, different activities, but in essence, we'll focus on coaching, mentoring, advice, networking, uh, and other services. The uh, range of programs that will be under consideration will include things like reopening and compliance to new COVID rules, business liaison service, business health checks, business model. Alan, your time has expired. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Strunk. Uh, thank you, Chair. I um, entered the debate on uh, Program 7, and um, sadly, I wasn't able to be at uh, Councillor Adams' uh, session on this. Uh, so what I'd like to do with the, uh, with the time um, uh, that I'm allowed is to make uh, some, uh, I suppose, I suppose some, some comments through the, uh, the various programs or projects uh, in, this, uh, in this program. I'd like to first... Um, uh, talk about something that uh, I wasn't uh, aware of until this morning, until I turned on the ABC radio at 612 and uh, listened to a uh, very disappointed and very upset uh, greeter um, who um, found out only um, uh, overnight, I suppose, um, that, um, that the program of Brisbane Greeters was in suspension. Uh, in hibernation, whatever words you want to use. These are words that are typically for government basically means um, um, we'll suspend it until everyone forgets about it and then we'll drop it. Now, I know that's a bit cynical, Councillor Adams, uh, and I'm not usually a person Hi, that is cynical. And through you, Chair, I'm sorry. I do apologize for that. Uh, and uh, so I, I listened to the CEO um, who was pointedly asked on three occasions by the presenter, how much money did the Brisbane Greeters cost Brisbane City Council to undertake uh, each year? And three times he failed to answer that question. 
Thank you to Councillor Johnson for uh, making uh, that figure available to us here during the debate. Um, so for $500 a day, over 100 Brisbane greeters do the work on behalf of this city, and you might as well call it marketing because basically it is marketing because if you have a look through what they actually do, and I went to the web page, of course, um, because, uh, by the way, it's still up and running. Uh, it, it doesn't say that it's in suspension um, or it's going to be in hibernation. Uh, but uh, anyway, so it was just a bit of a source of information for me on all those items or all those things that Brisbane City uh, greeters do on a volunteer basis. Now, volunteers, the only thing volunteers ever ask for in my, in my experience, and I've been a volunteer up until I became a counselor for over 25 years for over, well, I suppose six different uh, organizations. All we ask for is a bit of respect and a thank you from time to time. We do our volunteer work because we love to help. We love to contribute back to our community and these, these greeters I know I've met a few, I haven't met many, but I have met a few over my time as counselor. And, uh, and, and they're always smiling, they're always happy. They're always wanting to tell people about what they do. And, uh, and it can be as simple as um, exploring different parts of the city through many tours and things like that, which really helps our, um, our marketing of our city because we want people to be happy when they come to Brisbane because we want them to come back. Uh, and uh, as, a, as a retailer, um, you can't make, you, you're never gonna stay in business for one visit to your store by a customer. You need repeat business. And this is what this small group costing $500 a day, which is really a small amount of money to invest uh, do for us. They give access to public transport and anyone who rides a bus, and I'll be the first to put my hand up when I first started riding buses um, in this city many years ago, I won't say how long. Um, it, timetables can be a bit confusing, right? And, uh, and of course, names of, uh, of suburbs uh, on those buses, right? Uh, whether it be Chermside or The Gap or whatever, right? It, it's a bit confusing to the, to the tourists. So I, I just say that like Councillor Johnson, I thought immediately that one group within Brisbane City Hall, the museum, would be a great place for this group of Brisbane greeters to work out of. Now, we haven't, uh, and it was really telling that both the Lord Mayor and Councillor Adams didn't, in their address, didn't really talk about the Brisbane greeters. And, I, I, and, and that doesn't give me any encouragement that this group will be able to continue uh, into the future once the uh, COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. Now, moving on to um, something the Lord Mayor said in regards to the budget, right? And, and that was that this level of government, a local level of government, uh, doesn't have the levers that both the federal and the state government has when it comes to collection of taxes or charges or fees. Well, I would agree with that. We don't have many levers, but we have very strong levers. Levers that actually aren't affected, in most cases, aren't affected by the economic downturn that we're gonna see with the COVID-19 virus. The federal government, uh, their, their money is being quite severely restricted simply because the, with the downturn of economics, there isn't the same royalties for mining as is with the state government as well. And, uh, and even with people being laid off or dismissed from their positions, the PYE tax is going to be greatly reduced. Uh, the state government similarly, but in less, uh, less levers than the federal government has, is, is being affected as well. So, Lord Mayor, the rates, the biggest fund available to us that comes into our coffers every year 
is a guarantee, pretty much a guarantee. You're freezing the increase, which is fair enough. You're actually going to um, 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 allow people that are being affected by losing their jobs to put off paying their rates for six months, but that money is still going to come into our coffers next year if they're able to pay. Uh, but people will pay the rates. They'll, they'll probably do without food to pay the rates because the rates means if they don't pay the rates, their house could be sold out from under them. Now, we haven't done many of these uh, uh, um, um, in the past, right? Uh, probably about a about 10 a year that we, uh, that we bring into council uh, during the budget session that, uh, or, or, the, or the annual report. But there, there is that possibility and people are scared to death that for a few hundred or a few thousand dollars, they may lose their house. So I think it's a bit disingenuous for the lower mayor to say that the state and the federal governments, right, have uh, more levers to attract more taxes. Uh, but I say to you, Lord Mayor, sorry, Yours, ours is guaranteed, pretty much, right? Uh, and uh, so we should not use that as a, as a reason not to invest in this program, Program 7. Um, I, I come from business, as, uh, as other counselors here in the, uh, on Zoom do as well, and, uh, and I appreciate the fact that some of these programs are going to be helpful to those businesses as they reopen. But I just look at the small amounts of money and I know I say this almost every budget, we underinvest in certain programs or projects. Uh, but I truly, if, if, Brits, if Brisbane ratepayers would just have a look at Pre Program 7 and see how little money, in some cases, tens of thousands, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars in programs that will really not go anywhere, I don't think, uh, to uh, the, um, to, in order to help those businesses that are really going to struggle, as we know, we, we know what's coming down the pike. Come September, when job uh, job saver is is starting to um, uh, be taken away from uh, certain groups, um, then and we're going to see this impact greatly on uh, on businesses um, because their employees will not uh, be uh, job saver. Their employees will not. Uh, that, that stream from the federal government will, will, will be greatly reduced, if not removed. So I just, um, I just think that with the uh, excess of $120 million um, above and beyond what our, our, um, our uh, bottom line was uh, in the black last year, $75 million, and which is now projected to be $195 million, that really says it all to me that we have the money to do more. We should do more. Um, and I encourage the lower mayor as we go through uh, the, the, this, this part of the year and into early next year to have a look at what we can use with that surplus. Councillor Strunk, your time has expired. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Landers. Point of order, Chair. Um, order Mr. to you. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, I call the council now adjourn for morning tea for 15 minutes which commences only when all councillors have left the meeting. Saved by the bell. Um, I have a resolution moved by Councillor Landers, seconded by Councillor Hutton, that this meeting of council adjourned for a period of 15 minutes for the purpose of morning tea, are commencing when all councillors have left the meeting. All those in favour say aye and raise their hand. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Just lower your hand. Those against, no and raise your hand. Thank you. The ayes have it.
Welcome back, councillors. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Howard. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I'd like to speak on Program 7 and particularly on Outcome 7.2, Enabling Economic Growth. And, um, Chair, we've come together today to put forward a new budget at a very important time for our country and for this city. This budget needs to steer our city through some of the toughest 12 months Brisbane will face in a century. And I'm proud today, as a member of the Schrinner administration, a team that has delivered for Brisbane 16 consecutive years of responsible economic management. In these past 16 years, our city has grown by almost three quarters of a million residents. Through this time, Brisbane has continued to be one of the top two fastest growing cities in the nation. And I'm proud to be part of the team that has worked hard to deliver the infrastructure our growing city needs. To be part of the team that has delivered these projects that have truly changed the way we and future generations enjoy and live in this great city. It is because of this team's 16 years of responsible economic management and leadership that Brisbane continues to be a great place to live, work and relax. You can now get around quicker and safer than ever before with faster commute times and time-saving infrastructure like the Legacy Way and Kingsford Smith Drive. So residents spend less time getting to where they need to go and more time being where they need to be, doing the important things like spending time with family and loved ones. Chair, it's never been easier to walk, ride and enjoy our beautiful city with now more than 20 kilometres of roads, bridges, parks and paths lining the Brisbane River. Our city is greener and leafier than ever before with more than 2,000 parks scattered throughout Brisbane and more being created all the time. Soon, this team will deliver Brisbane's biggest new park in more than 50 years. And can I say that it has been wonderful to work together with residents on this project to turn Victoria Park into an iconic public parkland. The Schrinner administration is committed to continue building on our achievements of the past 16 years. And Victoria Park is just one example of the many more projects we are delivering to make the Brisbane of tomorrow even better than the Brisbane of today. To ensure that it continues to be a safe, vibrant, green and prosperous city, valued for its friendliness, optimism and enjoyable lifestyle. To make sure that Brisbane continues to be the best place to do business. The economic opportunities offered by our new world city are second to none. And it is just one of the many reasons why more people than ever before are choosing to call Brisbane home. We are creating jobs while planning for the future and ensuring our city has the services and infrastructure to meet the needs of future generations. We're steaming ahead on important projects like fast tracking the delivery of the Kangaroo Point Green Bridge that will create hundreds of local jobs and stimulate the economy with hundreds of supplier opportunities. And we continue our hard work to make sure that it is easy to do business in Brisbane. Brisbane businesses, big and small, support hundreds of thousands of jobs and it is their hard work that ensures Brisbane's economy continues to be a fierce competitor on the national and international stage. Today, the Schrinner administration is putting forward this budget at a very important time for our city. Brisbane businesses are, at this very moment, locked in a battle to survive the most challenging economic environment in a generation. A year ago, never did any one of us imagine that we would be here today presenting this new budget under these circumstances. Our very way of life has been forced to change in the most dramatic way we have ever seen since the Second World War. This pandemic has taken an incredible toll on this city and our economy. It is for this reason that I am especially proud to be a member of the Schrinner administration. The 16 years of responsible economic management that the LNP has delivered to this city means that Brisbane now has the economic resilience we need to stay the battle. 
It is only 16 years of responsible financial management that can deliver the kind of economic resilience you need, and Brisbane fortunately now has, to be able to continue forging ahead and deliver the balanced budget that we are putting forward today. A budget that will continue to support and strengthen Australia's largest council and greatest city. Only the Schrinner administration can be trusted to deliver for Brisbane residents and provide the support that small businesses need. Of course, a big focus of this administration is to ensure that it is easy to do business in Brisbane, to make sure that local government doesn't get in the way of doing good business, to make sure that local government doesn't get in the way of creating jobs. Because we know that when businesses are thriving, Brisbane is thriving. In the 2020-21 budget, we continue to invest in the projects and work that enables economic growth. In the face of changing economic conditions and technological advancements, Council is ensuring that projects are prioritised and that Council's regulatory frameworks are responsive to the needs of our city, that they are enabling economic growth. Council needs to be more agile than ever. New products and services are entering the city at a rapid rate, bringing new economic opportunities, new ways of working and living, and new expectations on how we, as a council, can support and enable residents, visitors and businesses to thrive. The emergence of new technology provides unprecedented opportunity to capture data about how Brisbane is performing and responding to changing conditions, and that has never been more crucial than it is now during these uncertain times. Through, through strategy 7.2.1, economic data, connectivity and insights, Council is investing in service 7.2.1.1, city analytics, to explore how data, technology and innovation can help accelerate the city's progress in achieving broader sustainability, prosperity and livability goals. Council will deliver data-driven decision-making to continue to build a robust economy, develop a stronger and safer community, as well as improve service delivery for residents, businesses and visitors. Strong alignment between urban planning and infrastructure delivery will maintain a well-functioning city that is attractive to highly skilled workers and ensure we deliver services and infrastructure that will, meet, that will meet the needs of future generations. The economic development team have been working tirelessly to monitor and report on the impacts of COVID-19. Now more than ever, it is important for council to build strong analytical skills and digital capabilities to ensure we have a real-time understanding on how our city is performing. City Analytics has been established in this year's economic development program to lead data-driven decision-making and find solutions to the key challenges facing Brisbane. Having real-time data on the local economy has enabled us to create a baseline for the Brisbane economy and model the predicted impacts of COVID against employment and industry growth forecasts. We will use this to identify opportunities to strengthen Brisbane's position in the post-COVID world. Working alongside the Economic Recovery Task Force and Brisbane Economic Development Agency, City Analytics will support Council's key recovery initiatives. The City Life Dashboard brings together a wide range of data, including pedestrian counts, car parking occupancy, bus patronage and e-scooter usage, to help us understand how COVID restrictions are impacting inner city movement and activity. And it will also be a vital tool in monitoring Brisbane's recovery process through the pandemic. Whilst it's difficult to quantify the magnitude of impacts on our economy and our communities, it is through this data that we have been able to identify which local economies have been hit hardest and which industries, businesses and jobs have been most impacted. It is just as important to understand the impacts of the pandemic as it is to keep track of our progress moving forward. This data will be a powerful tool for Council to better focus recovery efforts and ensure we prioritise the projects that deliver the greatest benefit to residents and stimulate economic growth in the best possible way. 
This information is shared on Council's website via the Benchmarking Brisbane report, and it's a great tool for businesses. Businesses can also use this tool to create a unique and tailored report to understand what sort of businesses make up the local com community. It is more important than ever before that Council continues to deliver the best possible support for business, business, Brisbane businesses and ensure that businesses have the best possible chance at succeeding and thriving by giving them the tools they need to make confident and informed decisions Councillor on the road Gallagher, to recovery. Your time has expired. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Cumming. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, the... Uh, I thought that Councillor Howard said the population of Brisbane risen 700,000. Was that in right in four in 16 years? No, surely not. No. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, the uh, uh, and the, the rate of growth of uh, surrounding local authorities uh, is higher than Brisbane. I Ipswich and Logan are growing at a quicker rate than Brisbane, uh, and uh, generally uh, it's it's a, it's. A, conceded that uh, Melbourne's actually growing quicker than Brisbane too. So the old days we thought that we might end up second biggest city in uh, in Australia, but uh, Melbourne is uh, well ahead of us and continuing to go further ahead. So that's not going to happen either. Anyhow, that's all right. Uh, I'd refer to uh, Program 7, Economic Development. Uh, uh, the uh, This program includes some, uh, some claims by uh, council, which I think are just basically false and uh, a bit misleading. Uh, last year's budget, they claimed the, the, the economic development section claimed they were bringing international students to Brisbane. Uh, and this year now they're bringing, bringing skilled workers to Brisbane. So uh, I'm uh, be interested to know how they do that. Uh, I think they're making false claims and that and uh, inappropriate claims. They've also, with this uh, emphasis on the uh, dealing with the crisis arising out of the, uh, the, the virus, uh, I would have thought that uh, uh, council would have been increasing funding for some of these programs in this part of the budget, but no, it's slash and burn. The uh, 7.2, enabling economic growth, uh, the anticipated expense for 1819 was 3.207 million. This year, it's a paltry 2.368 million. It's a drop of 26.17%. And compared to the proposed expenditure in the 2019 budget, it's even worse. Uh, the, in that budget, 1920 compared to 1920, it was down 25.79%, 2021 down 31.31% and 21.22 down 29.2%. Uh, last year, Brisbane City Council through this program was claiming credit for a city of many skills. Uh, but this year, that uh, program outcome disappears. So well, aren't skills important anymore? Uh, of course, the Brisbane City Council had nothing to do with education or trade training, so what they had to do with skills is uh, is pretty dubious anyhow. Uh, the, uh, instead, uh, thriving biz suburbs and business appears, uh, and uh, how long will this slogan last? This, this is an area of council where the slogans last a few years and then they come up with another slogan. And, of course... Uh, as part of that process, the name of the organisation changes uh, every now and then as well. It just uh, sort of stumbles from one uh, one name to the next uh, without achieving anything much in, of substance at any time. Last year, delivering the Brisbane 2022 New World City Action Plan was all the rage and substantial amounts of money were uh, being spent on that. 27.81 million in 2021, 28.351 in 21, 22, 29.1328 in 22, 23, stretching off into the future. But uh, now the Economic Development Agency steps in to that area and gets uh, 20.564 million, which is a drop of uh, down over 20%. So the LNP appeared to have given up trying to become a new world city or uh, and, and uh, or is that just a slogan that it's bitten the dust from the administration? Uh, there's a, probably a limit to how much you can flog a dead horse like New World City. Uh, in this, so this year the emphasis has been switched to small business and the suburbs. I'll predict that that will last one term at most, four years at most, but then credibly, credibility issues will arise. And the latest manager for economic development, sorry, sorry, Brisbane Economic Development Agency, and his or her new executive team will have to come up with something completely different. Uh, in the meantime, we have to put up with the sort of waffle uh, as for the, the program description. This program will support the delivery of Brisbane's 
future blueprints, key principles of creating a city of neighbourhoods and, and creating more to see and do by supporting and activating local business areas to provide easy access to personalised service, lifestyle and leisure options in the suburb. Well, that's that's a, uh, a mouthful if ever you saw it. Uh, I haven't any of the people who write these uh, budget documents heard that short, concise sentences are easy to read and understand. So council, by uh, doing some work in suburban uh, areas, by putting in a few trees probably, hopefully putting in some lights, a bit of artwork, they'll cause a suburban strip to provide easy access to personalised service, lifestyle and leisure options in the suburbs. In fact, what gumph. Repeating it. What gumph. Uh, that uh, now... Also, economic development, oh, sorry, again, the Brisbane Economic Development Agency, they will have the old choice. I remember attending briefings and they'd come along and they would take credit for every event that took place in Brisbane. So it, whether it be a Broncos match or State of Origin or a Bledisloe Cup match, it was always their response that they took credit for it. And, uh, of course, council does nothing to organise such events and uh, or fund such events in most part, but council will claim credit for them. And then there's uh, outcome 7.4, delivering world-class economic precincts. Now, I mean, they're into her, her, her uh, sorry, hyper, her, hyperbole big ter in big ways, but this one takes the uh, takes the credit. They've named some of the suburbs there, and I've read articles in the uh, in that uh, journal of uh, of merit the uh, courier mail uh, which has talked about uh, suburbs where there's a lot of vacancies in shops and everything and uh, and so, like fortitude valley spring hill paddington milton they all get a mention but apparently they are world-class economic precincts so i think i think actually they're probably uh, they're probably more in with the big chance of winning competition of the uh, suburbs with the most uh, most vacant shops or something like that as and, and as opposed to being a world-class economic precinct I still like an explanation why the Queen Street Mall the uh, the uh, revenue exceeds expense by a fair bit is there some uh, slush fund that the money goes into or, or why don't we reduce the mall levy so it just equals what's being spent instead of having such a big surplus uh, and uh, one practical thing I think that Brisbane needs is a tourist bus. My understanding is the previous private tourist bus has closed and I've been down to Melbourne and in Melbourne they've got two tourist buses that hop on hop on buses that run around the city. Uh, one is uh, run by the private sector and the other is run by the council. And I think it would be a good idea for the Brisbane City Council to make sure there's a hop on hop off bus operating around there and, and competition if there's a private one as well. And I think that would be uh, make Brisbane a serious tourist city because, uh, like, if you haven't got a hop-on, hop-off bus, uh, I, you know, all the major cities around the world that are big tourist cities have got those that available. And a lot of tourists, like myself, uh, look forward to uh, those sort of, uh, sort of sort of services being provided. And also, perhaps the service could be run in conjunction with the Brisbane greeters. So if you if you got off at a stop, there'd be someone from Brisbane greeters there take you around, explain. The, uh, what you were going to look at and uh, the history and everything like that and, and it'd go down very well and it, it'd keep our hard-working volunteer Brisbane greeters in uh, in operation because I'm like uh, Councillor uh, uh, Johnson I think uh, they're doomed and that the email that the uh, the manager read out m m meant to me to anyone reading it would say uh, we don't want you anymore and uh, I think that is most inappropriate and that's quite wrong uh, that uh, that should occur to such a great organisation that have done so much work uh, in uh, publicising Brisbane and explaining to people what about Brisbane and they've they've done a great job and they yeah, deserve Anna? better they deserve better treatment than that. Councillor yeah, point of order, Councillor Arden. Councillor, coming, take a question about what would have happened to them Councilor when he Cumming, cut Brisbane marketing. I know no, that's not how we ask questions. Councillor, coming, will you take a question? No, no, thanks. Right. Not today. Thank you. No questions. Yep, Councillor Cumming. Uh, we. Uh, also, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like Councillor Allen, I'd like to congratulate the small business owners in, uh, in uh, my area who uh, stayed open uh, when in the, at the height of the pandemic, when there was hardly anyone on the street. They were still, still open, still providing services. Uh, also, some of the, uh, a lot of the restaurants around Wynnum, uh, we've got 
a reasonable number of restaurants. A lot of them stayed stayed open and uh, sold takeaway and kept their businesses going and kept their families in employment and kept their staff uh, operating. And uh, uh, I think that's great that uh, these people have worked so hard. And I'm particularly in my area, and uh, I have to mention this is. So many of them are from ethnic backgrounds, you know, that are that, that have uh, run these businesses and are so so hard working and have done so much for uh, our local area. And uh, I'm urging uh, my local residents to support these people when things get get back to normal or as far as normal as they can. Support these local businesses and make sure that they get some uh, reward for having served us during this uh, during this dreadful time. Thank you. Further speakers, Councillor Juan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I enter, uh, I enter to contribute to the debate on Program 7 of the 2020-21 Budget on Economic Development. Mr. Chair, I'd like to firstly congratulate the Lord Mayor in demonstrating his leadership and resolve on delivering an incredible budget that has not only responded to the challenges brought to us by the global COVID-19 pandemic without compromising our city's financial viability, and at the same time, using this opportunity to steer the economic direction of our city, to prepare for the economic recovery and strengthen the future competitiveness of our city in the post-COVID-19 global economic settings. Mr. Chair, planning Brisbane's economy is not an easy task. Brisbane is not only Australia's largest council, but one of the fastest growing regions in Australia and the main engine of economic growth for Queensland and the rising business hub in the Asia Pacific region. I always remember when the former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani attended 2011 Asia Pacific Cities Summit. He said, city defines the country, not country defines the city. Brisbane is definitely a shining and rising star in defining Australia. Indeed, if we look at Brisbane's economic record, under the successive LNP administrations, we have consistently defined our competitive advantages in areas like mining, tourism, international conferences, international education, and filming opportunities. I believe everyone will re remember the excitement as well as the media attention we received when Thor was filmed in Brisbane. But knowing our competitive advantage alone is not enough to deliver good economic outcomes for our city. It requires a competent administration to do the hard work to make sure we don't squander our advantages. Thanks to the successive LMP administrations in Brisbane, we have law mayors who continue to develop friendship with international students through the International Student Friendship Ceremony. We have increased purpose-built student accommodation through council's city planning tools. We have made Asia Pacific Cities Summit region's leading summit. We have increased the supply of quality hotel rooms for business travelers who come to Brisbane for the businesses and conferences. And despite the obstacles laid down by an incompetent debt-driven labor state government, we were able to make record investment in Brisbane's infrastructure. And, and we have also implemented local pro procurement policy under law mayor Adrian Strina and that are both directly injected money into local economy and laid, laid the foundation for our city's continual economic growth. Mr. Chair, these examples of our success in defining Brisbane's competitive advantage and transforming these advantages into tangible economic benefits proves the vision and ability of the LMP administration in managing our city's economy and positioning our city in a global economic, economic setting. Mr. Chair, um, unfortunately I did not study Latin as it was an elective and not a compulsory subject when I was in high school. But I, I would like to quote a Latin phrase, times change, times change and we change with them. Despite all these achievements, we do not rest on our laurels. And we also recognize the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has had on the world economy. This is the perfect opportunity to reposition Brisbane so that we may thrive in a post-COVID global economy. Mr. Chair, we don't have crystal balls and we don't know when or how this pandemic is going to end, but we should still do our best to prepare ourselves 
and to plan ahead for the economic recovery. Mr. Chair, when talking of economic recovery, I would like to stress the importance of the role of city center plays in our economy. Brisbane continues to enhance its status as the most significant economy in Queensland and a key economic driver for the Southeast Queensland region. The city's location on the Australia trade coast is one of the fastest growing port precincts with the capacity to expand. Near both air and sea port facilities, making an attractive location for establishing and growing significant export industries. The city center comprising the CBD and the fringe is the most significant economic asset to Brisbane and the largest retail and workforce destination in Queensland. It accounts for approximately 30% of metropolitan Brisbane's GRP, that is gross rating point, 30% of employment and 70% of all businesses. But the impacts of the corona pandemic means we are entering the most challenging economic environment our generation has ever experienced. Employment and economic projections suggested that by the end of the June quarter, the number of jobs in Brisbane could be 15% lower than before COVID, equating to approximately 135,000 fewer jobs. Majority of these will derive from the inner city area with the largest losses in the CBD, Fortitude Valley, Bowen Hills, Milton, South Brisbane and Spring Hill. We have been utilizing a range of data sources to understand how this has impacted our city and to inform recovery efforts. On average, resident spending has increased, uh, sorry, decreased by 100 to 200 million dollars per month in our businesses and economy, most notably in the CBD. The economic development program will deliver a series of targeted programs and initiatives to rebuild Brisbane's economy and provide the best possible environment to sustain and create growth in jobs and support new and existing businesses. Facilitating strategic planning activities and activation events is key retail and entertainment precincts. In key retail and entertainment precincts will be crucial as we move through the recovery phase. Our continued investment in world-class infrastructure and public transport, like the Turn Up, Turn Up and Go Metro, Double Decker City Cats, and Green Bridges will transform Brisbane's key precincts and provide a catalyst for investment and revitalization. To sustain our city's competitive advantage as hub for innovation and ideas, Brisbane need to leverage its reputation as a lifestyle city that offers both high value jobs and high quality places that attract people and investments. We are in a unique position that offers an opportunity to renew the inner city precinct with a combination of targeted economic support strategies and place making strategies that facilitate ongoing growth, investment and revitalization. Creating cafe attractive, uh, sorry, creating safe, attractive and vibrant destinations for residents, workers and investors will strengthen our city's positioning as the premier destination for business and entertainment. Promoting local activation and major events will enhance the experience of our city and further support local businesses and traders. While instilling sense of pride and community spirit, we will continue to provide funding to implement, <clears throat> to implement a lively and ongoing program of events and festivals to stimulate the local day and night time economy, particularly in Queen Street and Valley Moors. Last financial year, more than a thousand events were, uh, have took place in our premier retail destination, Queen Street Mall, attracting more than 26 million visitors over the year. The Chinatown Mall is the multicultural center of the city, boasting a suite, suite of year-round events, festivals, and activations. The Brunswick Street Mall has and will continue to provide a platform for local emerging and world-class live music acts that boosts our city's nighttime economy. This year, a key focus will be to strengthen and support Valley daytime activities to generate more business opportunities for local traders. Coordinated and integrated place management of these centers is key to deliver a vibrant and fit for purpose 24 hour economy. 
This includes ongoing includes ongoing delivery of console services and targeted assistance to trader groups to maximize their potential for economic success. And further funding in this program will provide for the continued operation and ongoing maintenance of the city safe camera network across 132 locations to ensure the safety of visitors and residents in the CBD and Valley entertainment precincts. Creating a safe and pedestrian friendly environment is crucial to the functionality and success of this precinct. And works have begun to install safety improvements, including bollards and garden beds access point to Queen Street Mall. While the coronavirus crisis and restrictions imposed have put, to, uh, put a temporary hold on events and activations in our city's central locations, the economic development team in close co collaboration with Brisbane Economic Development Agency, I will prepare to roll out a series of economic recovery actions and strategies to get Brisbane businesses up and running again when the time is right. Mr. Chair, I'm proud to support Program 7 because it is the program that is going to prepare our city uh, for future re economic yep. recovery. Hope your time has expired. Thank you. Are there further speakers? I see no. I saw Councillor Landers. Thank you, Chair. I wish to speak in support of Program 7, Economic Development. The importance of this program in particular cannot be understated, Mr Chair. Local businesses are essential to Brisbane's economy and in recent months, it has been incredibly difficult for local businesses who have continually had to adjust their day-to-day -day operations. I would like to talk about the ways that we will be helping businesses to navigate these uncertain times by providing them with tools and skills needed to overcome the economic challenges of the coronavirus crisis and continue their success into the future. However, even before COVID-19, many Brisbane businesses were vulnerable to a variety of factors that require them to constantly evolve. Online trading, e-commerce, social media, and marketing are constantly changing and are crucial to remain viable. But learning about the many programs and resources that Council has on offer has reassured me that we are here to help and provide assistance in every way possible. Mr Chair, I know Councillor Cassidy claims Council have not provided enough full-time staff dedicated to this area. It is important to note that these business programs are delivered by specialists in their field. These are small medium enterprises themselves who we are in turn supporting. Additionally, Chair, many of these programs have been going for over five years. So they aren't listed in the budget as they are now businesses, business, sorry, business as usual. This administration has supported and will continue to support our local businesses. In addition to the significant role they play in Brisbane's economy, it's also essential for our community to have access to these businesses and services in their suburbs. And it, and it feeds into the leisure and lifestyle opportunities that this council prides itself upon. So Mr Chair, in this budget, Council will be doing just that. We will continue to support Brisbane businesses through forums, workshops, networking events, business liaison offices, dedicated online resources and more. Navigating the ups and downs of owning and running a business is challenging and often isolating for many who may not have the support network or financial support to see them through. I'm looking forward to providing these opportunities for my local businesses when safe to do so, hopefully in the not too distant future. Council has two dedicated business liaison officers who continue to engage and connect with small business owners across Brisbane. They play a vitally important role in sharing information with business owners via one-on-one -on -one meetings or attendance at various business events on the programs and resources that are available from Council to help support businesses across the city. 
The impacts of COVID have shown us that information sharing is critical and that having a strong online presence is where we are best placed to offer this type of support. This year, the Lord Mayor announced the Business and Local Economy Support Project. As part of this project, businesses will have access to a dedicated website that will support Council's business hotline that has done an outstanding job supporting businesses, particularly in recent months. This online space will also provide an extensive calendar of Brisbane business events, an online collaboration platform, and importantly, it will have the capacity to link businesses directly to council information and other relevant government and private resources. The new Brisbane Business Online Presence will be a gateway to existing and emerging businesses by providing enhanced information, resources and opportunities to connect and collaborate. As part of this initiative, Council continues to provide a citywide business events calendar for businesses to register their Brisbane-based event for free and reach a broader audience, as well as look for business events in Brisbane. As the Deputy Mayor mentioned, Chair, we recently launched the Brisbane in Business in Brisbane Facebook group, which has grown to more than 2,000 members. In this space, we share up-to-date resources and information from council and encourage business owners to share their own ideas, ask questions and to support each other. Council publishes quarterly economic snapshots in the Business in Brisbane newsletter with the aim of providing useful insights for Brisbane businesses. The articles cover a large variety of industries and topics showing the diversity of Brisbane's economy, as well as detailing key economic facts. This information is also readily available on Council's website. Mr Chair, we are also focusing on young people who, as we well know, have been among the hardest hit in terms of job losses, as this demographic are currently losing a lot of their casual work. We will be delivering a series of Gen U Inspire workshops targeted for 17 to 25 year olds that will provide greater knowledge and understanding about the essential skills and traits that will help them to succeed in a workplace. These are skills that may not have, they may not have learned in school or university, such as personal branding, career management, mastering job applications, and growing and nurturing their networks. The workshops have proven to be very popular with over 540 young people attending the events in 2020-21 and are set to continue with similar workshops to be held at the Brisbane Business Hub in the heart of the CBD. Another initiative I'd like to speak on is the inaugural Maker Entrepreneurship Program that in 2019-20 provided 12 emerging business owners tools, skills and mentorship over a 16 week period to transform what may have been a hobby into a transactional business. Mr Chair, I have a group of young mums who meet and network at one of my local cafes who have online and home-based businesses. These programs provide the opportunity for businesses just like theirs to grow, develop and thrive within Brisbane's economy. It will bring them into the vacant storefronts and creative and artisan markets. In return, it is also providing Brisbane residents with more leisure and lifestyle opportunities to enjoy. Other capacity building programs that will take place this year are networking in the suburbs and skills shop workshops, tailored to focus on target industries Skillshop workshops will cover a multitude of topics, ranging from employment skills, business survival through challenging times, supercharge or online sales, pricing and money management for online businesses, and planning your home-based business. The networking in the suburbs events are in response to feedback received from the business forums that business owners have found networking with others to exchange ideas has been uh, a prof has been profound. This year, Council plans to deliver approximately 40 networking sessions in libraries across Brisbane 
once social distancing regulations are lifted further. In the meantime, they have also successfully transferred to an online format. The Lord Mayor's business forums continue to provide an essential service to Brisbane businesses with more than 5,389 attendees since the forum started in 2012-2013. These figures aren't inclusive of the industry-specific Mayor's business forums for creative industry and social enterprise. It's great to hear that these forums will also be expanded to partner with Council's sport and recreation area to deliver a forum focused on community groups who lease Council's assets to inform them of what assistance is available from Council as well as an opportunity to learn from other business leaders in their sector. Council will also co continue to deliver Lord Mayor's Excellence Workshops. These workshops are interactive and presenters are successful business leaders who provide information and share their business insights with attendees. In response to social distancing restrictions imposed, many of these forums were also successfully transferred to a virtual format and will now continue to be delivered both online as well as traditional face-to-face -face workshops once restrictions are relaxed. Councillor Landers, your time has expired. Are there any further speakers? Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor McLaughlin, please turn, Councillor McLaughlin, please turn on your microphone. My apologies, no, Mr. No. Chair. <laughs> Mike now turned on. I, I rise to speak in support of the Program 7 2020-2021 budget and specifically on Outcome 7.5 and its services. And as has been emphasized by Economic Development, uh, the Economic Development Chair and other councillors today, this budget is about setting the course for our recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it has brought our city to a stop. Our local businesses stopped trading or closed altogether. Tourism is at a standstill and the construction industry continues to suffer. We hope that the new COVID-19 cases curve stays flat, but uh, Brisbane is now faced with a, a flattened economy uh, and challenges that we haven't seen for 100 years. So that's why this budget, this program is focused on supporting the Brisbane business community as best we can. Um, Mr Chair, the, in the June quarter, Brisbane's gross regional product is predicted to drop 15.8% over the COVID-19 period. We're seeing significant job losses in tourism, aviation, accommodation, food services and the education sector. The uh, construction industry has been hit hard and job losses are expected to grow over coming months without a, a pipeline of projects. And as the Chair for Infrastructure and the Councillor representing Pinkenbar and Eagle Farm, one of Brisbane's largest industrial areas, supporting the local factories that rely on the construction industry is particularly important to me. And uh, I'll come to that later in debate on Program 2. Uh, Mr Chair, the Lord Mayor announced the retasking of Brisbane Marketing as the Brisbane Economic Development Agency to respond to the impacts of COVID-19 and to drive growth uh, for the economy by delivering programs that will increase the city's business and trade opportunities. And it's uh, startling to hear the, the uh, hypocrisy from the other side who would have scrapped Brisbane marketing altogether if it had their way and are now complaining about the refocus of, of those folk who are, have been engaged in Brisbane marketing. Um, in partnership with the Economic Recovery Task Force, the renamed uh, Brisbane Economic Development Agency, uh, with its refocus, will support the development of priority industries where Brisbane has a competitive, competitive advantage and industries that present the best opportunities for growth. Now, one of those, Mr Chair, is in aviation. I'm proud to represent uh, the airport, one of the key constituent businesses in my ward um, and one of the significant businesses on which our city and state depends. And uh, I have, I've always focused on support for the aviation sector. Um, the Brisbane Economic Development Agency, through its previous incarnation as Brisbane Marketing, has been a long-term partner with the Brisbane Airport Corporation in helping to attract new operators to Brisbane, dozens of them, 
And um, with the opening of the new airport, with the opening of the new runway at the airport, that will continue to be a great opportunity once we recover from the COVID-19 crisis. And they'll be identifying ways to support and strengthen Brisbane's position as the premier Australian airport. Um, Mr Chair, my greatest concern in this regard is the ALP long-term plan to impose a curfew on the new runway when it becomes operational, and that would be an economic disaster for our city. And I implore those representing the ALP here in this place to reject that plan, to come clean, reject that plan, because a 24-7 airport gives Brisbane a distinct advantage in attracting international flights and will be crucial in our future. Mr Chair, there is a long and difficult journey ahead for our city as it recovers from the economic impacts of COVID-19. Um, this is one of the great programs in our budget that supports that recovery, and I commend it to the Chamber. Further speakers? Councillor Shree. Thanks, Chair. I'll, I'll keep it pretty short. I, I must say, in terms of this budget program, I'm, I'm not particularly surprised by the rhetoric or the overall political strategy. I, I just want to, again, state for the record the, the importance of recognising that econ economic development and economic growth for its own sake is not necessarily something that any administration should aspire to. What we must continually be asking ourselves is who benefits from these projects and programs and, and where do the positive impacts of economic growth actually flow? Um, so often the kinds of strategies that the council has employed in this field tend to serve the interests of larger companies and corporations. And, and despite the rhetoric of supporting small local businesses, the the way these fee cuts and, and changes are um, implemented in practice tends to lead to a competitive competitive advantage for those larger co companies. And the, the resultant loss of revenue means there's less support for community services and events, which in turn means less local ac economic activity um, that generates revenue for smaller businesses. So I, I think it's a shame, but perhaps not surprising, that we're not having those important conversations about equity and social justice and how we can have a just economic recovery, an economic recovery that instead of concentrating wealth in the hands of a few wealthy people, actually seeks to redress some of the economic and power imbalances within our city and distributes money and support services and incentives to the, the people and the groups that most desperately need it. Uh, a, a genuine economic development and economic recovery strategy would have focused much more heavily on providing public housing and community housing for the most, most vulnerable, on increased funding and support services for um, people experiencing homelessness, etc. cetera. Um, instead, the way this economic development, economic recovery um, program is being framed seems to obscure those important social justice and equity considerations and instead just replicates some of the worst elements of, of neoliberalism. Um, I'm, I know there's some good stuff in this program as well, and I don't want to be um, outright um, negative. I, I, I do acknowledge that there are some some valuable changes here, but overall, I think the the general philosophy philosophy that underpins this program is a step in the wrong direction and. I think it's a shame that the council administration isn't willing to think a little bit more laterally about alternative sources of revenue um, and alternative ways to support an economic recovery other than the same old that we, we see year after year. So, um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be voting against this program. Uh, I don't think it will surprise anyone to hear that, but I hope that the council administration will consider in future thinking a little bit more about those who are less fortunate, um, I say less fortunate, really they've been screwed over by neoliberal capitalism. It's not that they've been unlucky, it's that they've been deliberately exploited. Um, but I'll save that conversation for another time. Cheers. Further speakers, Councillor Maddock. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. And um, I thank you for the opportunity to speak on what will be one of the most important program areas uh, debated in this budget. Uh, particularly given the impact of COVID uh, on our society, not only 
socially, structurally, but importantly also financially. Uh, Mr Chairman, um, I'm in the ward office right now and I'm in the middle of the Paddington business strip and I have shop operators around me who are just mum and dad operators. I listened to the words of Councillor Shree. It's unfortunate that he doesn't get or understand the basic requirements of those mum and dad operators who are small operators, who are not big business, who do this for love and to earn a living. A lot of them aren't rich. They don't get rich from their business, but they do it for passion. They do it for their contribution to community. Point of order, Councillor Shree. Claim to be misrepresented. Noted, Councillor Maddock. Mr Chairman, this is not a philosophical debate at, uh, in the School of Social Sciences around capitalism and um, different gender classes. It's about mum and dad operators, and that's what this budget and this Lord Mayor is delivering on. We've heard a lot from the Labor opposition around Brisbane marketing. All of us who have been in this chamber for a long time know that um, they have always criticised the organisation. Brisbane marketing has always been a reflection of the priorities uh, of our city from term to term. Um, in regards to being able to deliver on those outcomes that were required as a destination city, as a new world city, on tourism and investment. And now it, it's reflective of what our economy and what our city needs through its new term of Brisbane Economic Development Agency. This budget will deliver on so many important things in our local precincts, in, a, in particular in Service 7.3.2.1, about real engagement with business operators, about providing those opportunities to work with them to provide real outcomes, to provide the support they need, but also to empower them themselves. A lot of business operators are doing the things they need to right now to change the way that they run their businesses, market their businesses, distribute their goods to their customers under this new regime that we have. This program area will work strongly with them to be able to provide level of support. Now, as part of this program, the Lord Mayor uh, announced uh, before the budget the business fee reduction, and to his credit, he continues that commitment to all of our business operators. Um, Councillor Shree made the comment that this somehow benefits the larger end of town. The reality is that this actually benefits everyone, including um, small operators, but importantly also those people who have lost their jobs and now have decided to start up a small business to find a new source of income. In fact, in my own ward, there is an, a brand new business called Paddington Jams and Sources that because of these fee reductions could actually afford to start their own business. That's the kind of outcome that this program is delivering, that this Lord Mayor is delivering to this. These kind of simple and effective measures that the Lord Mayor is taking to waive fees and provide discounts is absolutely fundamental to small startups and existing small mum and dad operators. Now, this fee structure uh, is categorised in a number of different areas, and this program provides enormous benefit. There'll be a 100% discount on design assessment fees related to startups and one-off fees, 50% discount on application fees, and 10% discount on renewal fees. This is real outcomes and real savings for all of those businesses. Importantly, also, as part of this program, we will be that one-on-one -on -one connection uh, with business operators. You know, we've seen uh, to date the initiatives around conducting local area marketing and activation strategies. A lot of the local businesses are spending all of their time just earning a living and running their business. They want to be able to do more and work collectively as a precinct, and this program area will help them achieve that. By bringing in an external to help them do the heavy lifting on this kind of work, it will ease the pressure on those local businesses to have to have multiple hats to achieve that outcome. All councillors in the chamber work closely with their local businesses. You see them every single day in your engagement with them around how they're trying to juggle work, life and marketing and, and, and initiatives within their precincts, either individually or collectively. The programs within this program are doing that. We've already seen initiatives in Stones Corner, Sandgate and Wynnum and Nunda where Council's economic development team has actively engaged with businesses located within these precincts to develop and release local business destination plans. Our local chamber or our local affiliated group here in Paddington 
had their first meeting a few weeks ago with a placemaker to start that conversation so that when you go to a precinct, irrespective of which side of the river you're on, you are getting a unique experience that that precinct delivers. We are bringing on board qualified, experienced, professional people to help those operators achieve those goals. And by working collectively with them, Council is also developing a precinct positioning and activation toolkit, which upon completion will be a tool and process able to use to be used by business groups and chambers to determine the unique offering and positioning that they so desperately need to provide that unique destination experience. Now, as part of this budget, we're also continuing the pop-ups program. Lots of us have bacon shops. Comment has been made in the chamber about that. And this program, uh, which was launched by the Lord Mayor and continues strongly in this uh, budget, will continue to deliver on activation of those spaces. Now, um, how that program uh, works is that there is a grant program that will bring together the shop owner and a prospective pop-up, providing a $2,000 grant to, to each of those two persons of two bodies to be able to reach an agreement on entering into a lease for a location for an agreed period of time. This will help the uh, owner of the business and the precinct by having an activation rather than a vacant shop. But it'll also assist that pop-up as a startup in um, getting its foundations, developing uh, its own customer base, and for that owner to also build up um, their own level of confidence uh, and knowledge so that they may then want to enter into a, uh, full, uh, into a longer lease with that shop owner. Um, this program this year will provide the opportunity uh, for 12 pop-up tenants to, um, to look at uh, providing more and more of those opportunities. Um, because of, um, of COVID, obviously, there was some um, constri uh, constraints around that program, but um, this program will continue to deliver that. And as we see the economy continue to change and develop, this issue around pop-ups will be absolutely fundamental to being able to provide activation in those precincts. We all know that there's nothing worse than driving through or walking through a precinct with multiple vacancies. By having this opportunity there for people, it will provide the level of energy and activation required. And so from that, we will see a more variety of shops. We will see people wanting to establish themselves within those precincts and in it will also provide the long-term viability for those emerging businesses. Mr Chairman, um, as part of this whole program, we're also seeing this investment by the Lord Mayor in activation of these precincts through improvements through um, infrastructure, so enhancements around landscaping, uh, furnishing, art, but also activation, so that once um, these enhancements are built, what will then be the program of activation within those precincts to keep people interested. All of these grassroots initiatives by the Lord Mayor are absolutely fundamental to supporting all local businesses. And it's not just about the big end of town. These programs absolutely target the mum and dad operators that are the lifeblood of our economy. That's what this administration is about. We have a strong history of supporting local businesses, of support, supporting local precincts of providing the tools and the resources to help them empower themselves within their organisations, either as loose affiliations or as formal chambers, so that they can embrace and own their precinct, so they can build that sense of community. We have within our areas currently a lot of um, pop-ups as far as social media, Instagram and Facebooks, all supporting local ch uh, chambers and businesses within our respective wards. These are great initiatives brought on by the local community. And you can see by them that the local community wants to get behind local business. It is about buying locally. It is about going up to the coffee shop or to the cafe or to the, the fashion or accessory space within those precincts and buying something. This program that the Lord Mayor is implementing and overseeing by the Deputy Mayor in this financial year will absolutely support the, the mindset of the local community in supporting local business. This is about taking the steps forward to empower and support. Councillor Shri, you had a misrepresentation. Thanks, Chair. Councillor Maddock appeared to suggest that I um, 
didn't support or care about the the positive elements of this program that support small businesses. I'm I'm quite supportive of those fee cuts and and I draw a strong distinction between smaller local businesses and larger corporations. Thanks. Thank you. Further speakers? Um, Further speakers? I see no hands. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Mr Chair, and I thank the uh, Chambers for the debate today. Uh, I'm very proud to present Program 7, Economic Development to the Chambers, as the priority program in this budget this year, as the most important program in delivering that recovery and revitalisation to our small, medium and large enterprises right throughout Brisbane. Uh, but we are unashamedly small to medium enterprise in this council because that is more than 94% of the businesses in Brisbane. The mums and dads that Councillor Maddock was talking about, the startups, the scale ups, the youth, um, the olders, the volunteers, this is all to do with our businesses and prosperity and economic development through you, Mr Chair, to Councillor Sheree. When economic development is going strong, the whole city is going strong. That is who benefits. No classes, no class warfare, the entire city and every resident benefits from a strong economy. The problem, of course, that we have with the ALP is that they don't understand the tough economic times mean restructure and responsible financial measures. What we heard from four out of their, or well, three out of their four speakers today was Brisbane greeters, Brisbane greeters. A misconstrued email discussing that Brisbane greeters may not be delivered by Brisbane Economic Development Agency anymore. It is absolutely false for Councillor Cook to say it's the first we heard of it today because Councillor Cook asked the question through you, Mr Chair, on Monday afternoon, and I answered in full the question on what programs would be looked at. And I listed them and Brisbane Greeters was mentioned. I do note that she did fail to listen to most of the answers I gave because I made it very clear on what programs right across economic development were definitely still there. Councillor Cook, however, talks about Brisbane marketing, now Brisbane EDA is being decimated Decimated? Well, let's see what you guys would have done through you, Mr Chair. Labor would disband Brisbane marketing. Where does that leave all of those programs that they deliver? What does disband mean in the thesaurus? Dissolve, demobilise? You have disband disbanded it. No injection. Disbanded. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Mr Chair. Make no doubt about it. Brisbane marketing and all of the programs in that have been a clear focus of the opposition to be totally disbanded from the day it was actually instigated by this administration. We also heard clearly from Councillor Strunk that we don't really need to worry about the economic development because we've got guaranteed income. Guaranteed income, I hear. Well, Councillor Strunk, through you, Mr Chair, probably presumes that uh, rates are guaranteed. But rates are only 50% of our revenue, Councillor Strunk, through you, Mr Chair. The rest is highly variable. There is a lot of re revenue, like infrastructure charges, the reductions that we are making in fees and charges that are not guaranteed. And we know already the hit is $142.5 million in the last year alone. Last year, we budgeted for a $300 million surplus, but we ended up with $74 million because of the pandemic. How is that guaranteed revenue through you, Mr Chair? So I have to say thank you, Councillor Allen and Lord Mayor, because a surplus of $195 million in the forward years is an outstanding result under uncertain circumstances that we're dealing with today. We also heard about shop fronts and how unsuccessful that activation program has been. The one launched by the Lord Mayor in February, Mr Chair, in February, and then was shut again in March. But we already have three MOUs signed and the phone calls keep coming. And as soon as we are able to get more signed up and shop fronts start opening again, I am sure we will see them right across the city. I'm glad to see Councillor Cook can actually add up two lines between destination marketing and the visitor economy to come up with the $13 million that is being spent in apparently marketing. But again, as I clearly explained on Monday afternoon, 
the visitor economy and destination marketing is absolutely important collaboration with our government and industry partners to deliver for the businesses of Brisbane. Yes, there will be some marketing, but that's how tourism works, Councillor Cook, through you, Mr Chair. It includes itinerary contact, but it's also about working with BAC, as Councillor McLaughlin mentioned, about aviation retraction, reattraction. Locus, local tourism operators who are small to medium enterprise to create new tourism events, experiences and attractions. Develop a sustainability agenda for those tourism operators. Do business development programs uh, for tourism operators, for our food and future initiatives, uh, for all of those pillars that we know in our industry that are so strong. On top of that, I never said the grants were cancelled in Brisbane Economic Development Agency. The Entrepreneur Global Entrepreneur, the Tourism Experience Development, the Convention Trailblazer grants are all on the table. Brisbane Economic Development Agency, if they see the value in those going forward, will absolutely deliver those grants. But on top of that, they have the value of Brisbane Greeters, though. Program. Infections. Councillor Adams. And they have a three floors of a Brisbane business hub to deliver extended programs, providing mentoring, workshops, modules and networking for up to a thousand, if not more businesses as we come out of this pandemic over the next 12 months. We heard from uh, Councillor Cummings that gone with a list of workshops for business skills and things out in the local area. And again, I say to you, Councillor Cummings, if your colleagues had bothered to listen to the, and I think even when said it, lots of words that I spoke on Monday afternoon. Yes, there is lots of words in two hour question time. There was also lots of answers in that two hour question time, including the list of all of those programs, not one of which has been cancelled going into the next financial year. The fact is, we have been doing these for so long and so successful that they're not projects by economic development. They are business as usual. They are things that we deliver day in and day out. We have got Start, Run and Grow, website and pocket guides, the accessible website, the dedicated business in Brisbane Facebook, the Lord Mayor's business forums, the Lord Mayor's business excellent workshops, the networking in the suburb sessions, the skill shot workshops, the business liaison offices, the industry specific forums for creative industry and social enterprise, the business Brisbane business hotline, the opportunity Brisbane um, investment uh, information that goes out to businesses, the accelerator programs for social enterprises, the maker industry, and Gen U programs for youth business skills, the business in Brisbane newsletters, and uh, so much more half day workshops with over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of participants, all still there. Business as usual delivered by an outstandingly uh, in, uh, enthusiastic and passionate team of officers in economic development who, as Councillor Landis said, work with small to medium enterprises to deliver these programs right across the city. Councillor Maddock also mentioned our local business partnerships initiatives uh, that Councillor Cummings, through you, Mr Chair, is delivered in the suburbs. And it is hypocritical of you to say nothing in the suburbs, which one of the most successful LBPIs in the last 12 months has actually been in Wynnum which you know very well about yourself. It's about enabling business owners Point of and order. Providers to collaborate Point with council. Thank you, Councillor Cunning. Oh, it's claimed to be misrepresented. Noted. And also while I'm here, um, Councillor Adams, I must insist that, um, can I please ask you to refer to all councillors in the third person and all comments through me, please. Councillor Adams. Uh, sorry, Mr Chair. So Councillor Cumming knows very well uh, about Wynnum and the LBPI that has been done down there. So it's a, a bit rich saying gone are the support in the suburbs through this program as well. What we actually see in this program is the dedication and the commitment of this administration and the council officers to ensure that we are supporting businesses of all sizes through what is the most significant economic crisis that our country has seen in over a century. What we heard from the opposition was bickering about a program that will continue, that we love, 
which will be delivered not through Brisbane Economic Development Agency that will continue to be the front door and the welcome to Brisbane as well. And it is outrageous some of the falsehoods that have been put forward today by those on the opposite side of the chamber. I would like to thank Andrea Canafake, the divisional manager, Brett Fraser through the Brisbane Economic Development Agency and all the council officers that continue to work long hours to deliver these workshops and these programs and make sure that we continue to support businesses and the drive the economic development of Brisbane out of these uncertain times. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, Councillor coming ahead. Yeah. What are you going? Sorry, sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't talk about the uh, uh, sub, any sub, sub, suburban programs having been cut. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll now put the um, I'll now put the program area. All those in support of Program Seven, please say aye and raise your hands. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Please lower your hands. And those against, please say no and raise your hands. The aye. aye. No division has been called. The ayes have it. Program. Sorry, I didn't hear you say the ayes have it. Did oh, you the say the ayes have it, Councillor Wise? Yes, the ayes have it. Division. Division called okay. by Councillor Adams and Councillor Landers. Uh, please ring the bells. All right, councillors, all those in support of program seven, please uh, say aye, raise your hand and hold it up so it may aye. be- Aye. 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 Please lower your hands. And those against, please say no and raise your hand. No. Thank you. Please lower your hand. Clarks, please read the result. Mr Chair, the ayes have it, the voting being 24 in favour, one against and one abstention. The ayes have it. Councillors, I will now return to program area one, transport for Brisbane. Councillor Murphy. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that for the transport for Brisbane program, one, the services of the council, the allocations for the operations and the projects and the rolling projects as set out on pages 16 to 26, and the indicative schedules on pages 144 to 146 for the years 2020 to 2021 through to 2023 to 2024 and the allocations for the operations and project for the service 1.2.1.2 provide ferry services and maintenance for the year 2024 to 2025 through to 2030, 31 as set out on page 
313 and the allocation for the 2024-25 for the Brisbane Metro project as set out on page 25, so far as they relate to program one, be adopted. Second. It's been moved by Councillor Murphy, seconded by Councillor Huang, that the transport for Brisbane program one, the, ser uh, the services of council, the allocations for the operations, the projects and rolling projects as set out on pages 16 to 26 and the indicative schedules on pages 144 to 146 for the years 2020 to 2021 through to 2023-24 and two, the allocations for the operations and projects for the service 1.2.1.2 provide ferry services and maintenance for the year 2024-25 through to 2030-31 as set out on pages 313 and three, the allocation for the 2024-25 for the Brisbane Metro project as set out on page 25, so far as I relate to program one, be adopted. Is there any debate, Councillor Murphy? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr Chair. Before I uh, commence with program one, I just want to answer two questions on notice. First was from Councillor Cassidy. Um, he asked why there was a sharp decline in the surplus from 2020 to 21 financial year in the transport for Brisbane business. Um, the decline is due to additional expenses in 2020-21 compared to the previous financial year, mainly due to an increase in Transport for Brisbane's asset depreciation, funding for transition to the new ferry uh, operations and maintenance contract and operational safety measures. Uh, and then there was a question from Councillor Johnson who asked uh, what the marketing and communications budget for uh, Brisbane Metro at service 1.2.5.1 is. Uh, in the previous financial year, that budget was $432,622, and that included uh, drone footage, uh, graphic design, uh, letterbox drops, translation services, etc. cetera. Um, the budget for this year is set at $380,000, so a slight drop there. Chair, I'm very pleased to introduce Program 1, Transport for Brisbane. Transport for Brisbane will deliver Australia's most modern, public and active transport, including the Brisbane Metro, for efficient and sustainable movement of people. Council's very proudly operated the city's buses since 1925, starting with just 11 buses, and has expanded over the years to our current fleet of more than 1,200 buses, complemented by the city ferries, city hopper, and city caps that service 25 terminals over a 22 kilometre stretch of the Brisbane River. Council aims to provide safe and efficient travel options through the delivery of coordinated citywide public and active transport options to our customers. Some 84 million trips were taken on our network in the last financial year. That's a lot of journeys and every one of them is important to this administration. In the last few months, I'm particularly proud of the flexibility that Council has shown to ensure public and active transport continues to be delivered across our city in the face of the pandemic. And I'd like to acknowledge council officers and staff for their hard work and dedication to our customers. To them, we say thank you. Mr Chair, when Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner took on the mantle of Lord Mayor just over a year ago, he signalled the biggest change in transport priorities Brisbane City Council has seen since TransApex. His first announcement, $550 million for new green bridges, heralded a step change in our approach to infrastructure provision. While Council continues to acknowledge the role that roads play in our transport network, this Lord Mayor and this administration knows that great cities have great public and active transport networks and that our focus should be on getting people to take up these options. To do that, we are overseeing the single biggest investment in public and active transport in Brisbane's history here in Program 1, Transport for Brisbane. Program 1 accounts for as much capital expenditure over the four-year forward estimates as every other program combined. It shows that this administration and this Lord Mayor is backing up words with action, investing ratepayers' money to create local jobs and to deliver a public and active transport future that our city can be proud of. That starts with the game-changing Brisbane Metro project, a $1.244 billion investment in Brisbane's public transport system, and an investment that actually does the lion's share of work in terms of moving people around our city. We hear a lot about the $5.7 billion Cross River Rail project, but never forget that it's actually the bus network that performs 66% of the public transport task here in Brisbane. 
unlocking the congestion on the Victoria Bridge and unleashing the potential of our network is critical. This is Brisbane's most important public transport project. And we are excited that works are now underway. Early works are already happening at South Brisbane and we are working to receive our first Metro vehicle next year for testing. We've secured agreement from the state to move the cultural center underground station off the critical path, allowing us to build the Adelaide Street Tunnel, the North Quay upgrade and the Victoria Bridge connection. We've announced the preferred tenderer, the Brisbane Move Consortium of Asiona and Arup, and we'll now get on, along with finalizing the design. We're fast tracking everything within our control to see our first vehicles in operation in 2023, despite suffering an 18 month delay at the cultural center. Now the scope has changed and so too has the cost, but we are getting a world-class green, fast, safe public transport system, the likes of which we've never seen in Australia. We now have a Brisbane Metro vehicle, which is all electric and with zero tailpipe emissions. That comes with a higher price than the diesel vehicles originally factored into the project, but it's a better investment as a result. We have purchased more land at the Rochdale Depot to cater for future growth of the Metro fleet as further stages roll out across the city. By now opting for a board tunnel instead of a cut and cover design, it will cost more, but it will have less impact on traffic and it will help expedite the Adelaide Street vision. And we're getting on with a project that will deliver 2,600 jobs that our city and our economy needs now more than ever before. Mr. Chairman, this program also supports our wildly successful Seniors Free Off Peak Travel, another positive initiative from this Lord Mayor to support public transport and our senior citizens in one project. Launched on the 1st of October last year, seniors from across the city celebrated the launch of Free Off Peak Travel on Brisbane City Council buses, city cats and ferries. While it's the state government who sets the fares and collects the revenue, it's council who is delivering this free off peak travel initiative that eases the cost of living for older residents and encourages connections with family and friends. At the end of May this year, more than 2.2 million passenger trips have already been taken by seniors during off peak periods on buses and ferries, an enormous amount of travel. Mr. Chair, speaking of our ferries, this program also invests to deliver our next generation city cats. Our city cats are an iconic part of our river and a popular way to travel for both businesses and leisure with patronage for Yugara, our first double-decker city cat, number 22, proof that popularity uh, of its popularity with approximately 48,000 trips taken since Yugara set sail on the 26th of December last year. City Cat 23 is already being built and by December 2024, a further seven city cats will be delivered under this project. This next generation double decker city cat can carry a total of 170 passengers with up to six dedicated wheelchair and mobility scooter areas. On the upper deck, there is seating for 20 passengers and rear deck seating for 16 passengers and space for 10 bikes. City Cat 23 is the second gen uh, second next gen city cat being built currently. The construction of city cat 23 began in December last year and is being built by local Murray business Oz ships. It takes around 30,000 hours to design and construct a city cat. So this investment means employment of 30 full time employees and 30 contract workers creating and supporting local jobs when our city needs it most. Speaking of local jobs, since 1925, Council has been involved with ferry services on the river. And in September last year, Council approved a significant contracting plan for the ferries operations and maintenance contract to go to market. Being the River City, we are continuing to deliver river walks, upgraded ferry terminals, and our new next generation fleet of double-decker city cats. Pre-COVID, it was not unusual for more than 5 million passengers to travel by ferry or city cat annually a real and genuine public transport option for Brisbane residents wanting to use our river to get around the city. To ensure the iconic fleet of vessels can continue to provide a world-class river transport service for millions of customers, Council will be finalising the outcome of that tender as a matter of priority. Chair, while City Cats are our single most expensive public transport vehicle, at the other end of the spectrum, but no less important, is our personalised public transport network, or PPT. PPT commenced in 2006 and is a low-cost hail and ride loop service that helps connect Brisbane residents to their local transport hubs. 
This service operates in areas where TransLink services are limited, and specially marked wheelchair accessible and air conditioned maxi cabs are provided. Last financial year, approximately 25,000 passengers used the PPT service, and um, the combined council cabs contract and PPT service with black and white cabs commenced on the 1st of July 2019. We continue to provide that essential service in this budget. Chair, the world is driving towards a more sustainable transport future, and increasingly uh, that is electric. With millions of electric buses operating in cities around the world, London, Paris and Amsterdam are already shifting to electric public transport systems. Brisbane Airport is one of only two airports in Australia operating an electric bus fleet. And their feedback has been that their buses are incredibly quiet and are helping to reduce 250 tonnes of carbon emissions each year, which equals 100 less cars on the road. Brisbane's current bus contract will end in 2022, and now is the time for Brisbane to explore a transition to vehicles with a smaller carbon footprint. As part of a new bus bill contract, we will ask bidders to provide their plans for transitioning to new power sources, and a contract will be awarded in the coming months to partner with an electric bus su supplier to operate four electric buses on the City Loop service. The City Loop will become Council's first ever dedicated electric bus service and will put to the test a 12 month trial on Brisbane roads uh, before the end of the year, which will help us uh, understand their capabilities and how we can integrate them into our network. It'll be an exciting time for our CBD with more green transport options available to residents, visitors and commuters. I'm pleased to advise that the city loop buses will soon be joined by new green ways to travel in the CBD through the Green Bridges program. With the Lord Mayor's commitment of $550 million towards new green bridges, we're making the largest investment in active travel infrastructure in our city's history. Not only will green bridges boost the economy with an initial 500 jobs, they will transform the way people move in a livable and connected river city. The Kangaroo Point Green Bridge will be one of Brisbane's most used walking and cycling bridges, with more than 6,100 trips per day, removing 84,000 car trips every year. And the new Breakfast Creek Green Bridge will provide a seamless connection between the inner city and the Laura's Bonnie River Walk, which sees more than 2,000 trips every day. We've announced that we're fast tracking these bridges, which will see both of them delivered in this council term ahead of their original delivery date in 2025. With more than $300 million being invested over four years, these historic green bridges will connect communities, create jobs and enhance our lifestyle for generations to come. Alongside the Bold Green Bridges program, we're expanding Brisbane's network of safe and accessible bikeways, critical to the long-term development of our city. Council's 700 kilometre long bikes, bicycle network will continue to grow. We're investing more than $120 million this financial year towards a suite of active transport projects to ensure that getting around our city in an active way becomes a more attractive way to travel. We know that Brisbane residents love our city's expanding network of river walks and bikeways. And so we'll spend $58 million in the next two years on building major bikeways, including completing the Indrapilly River Walk. This river walk provides a new active travel offering, bringing uh, this much loved part of the river to life. This is a safer alternative to the current corridor along Radnor Street. This project includes a five metre wide separated cyclist and pedestrian facility and a dedicated pedestrian connection to Riverview Terrace. It's a critical part of the future active transport corridor between the Western Freeway Bikeway and the University of Queensland. And while we deliver on major bikeways, we remain steadfast on improving smaller suburban and urban links as well. Our newly formed Active Transport Infrastructure Fund has $30 million allocated this term for a variety of suburban projects. This means we can get on with completing missing links and enhancing the safety of the network where it matters most, closer to home. A number of local links are listed for investigation and construction in the financial year, including the Gateway Upgrade North at Weyers Road, uh, Viola Place on the Morton Bay Bikeway, the Norman Creek Bikeway underpass at Cooperoo, uh, in Cooperoo. Uh, enabling active travel is much more than building bikeway links. This investment will, it'll mean more lighting, signage, safety facilities and bikeway parking. While this fund is in its first year, it has a number of projects associated with it and the intent of this fund is to move from a project driven approach towards a more network centric approach where each part of the active transport network we build adds to the overall connectivity of the network. Speaking of cycling improvements, we're committed to safe and easy movement through the heart of the city, whether on bike or bus or foot. 
We're investing $16.6 million over four years to make the Brisbane CBD more pedestrian and cyclist friendly. There's no doubt that the character of our city centre is changing with major inner city developments coming online, and it's time to harness the disruption being created by these projects and the COVID-19 pandemic to lock in long-term behavioural change and encourage Brisbane residents to get on their bike. Uh, Chair, creating a culture of active travel is one of the great tasks of our uh, travel behaviour uh, officers in active school travel, and we continue to support that program with $2.8 million uh, over this term. As well as getting school kids on their bike, uh, so too when tourism picks up, we'll need to ensure that visitors to Brisbane have transport options and we'll continue to deliver City Cycle as a travel option for that. So in 2019-20, there were 1,500 average trips per day on City Cycle and there's been more than 3.9 million trips since the scheme began. We also continue our investment in uh, active, uh, sorry, in bus stop improvements and we're investing $16.7 million on this important work in this financial year. Councillor Murphy, your time has expired. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Cassidy. Uh, thanks very much, Chair. I speak on uh, Program 1, Transport for Brisbane. Uh, and, Chair, um, Program 1 should have been all about moving Brisbane, but uh, we really are stuck in second gear here in this budget, Chair. We see from the papers and the scanned info provided by Councillor Murphy uh, in the information sessions that this program is more talk than action. The Metro, which is always talked about, has blown out by almost $300 million uh, in this budget. Councillor Murphy confirmed that the tunnel boring option instead of the cut and cover in Adelaide Street has only added about $25 million to that bill. So, Chair, the question is, where has all the money gone? The Lord Mayor accuses workers of seeking a fair pay deal. Um, surely that can't account for the hundreds of millions of dollars extra that this is now going to cost. So, to date, no adequate explanation has been given to the people of Brisbane. This isn't monopoly chair, it's not funny money. This is the hard earned cash of hundreds of thousands of ratepayers, and they deserve to know the details of this project. The Lord Mayor is accountable to the people of Brisbane. It's utterly wrong for him to slip off quietly after the election and thumb his nose at increasingly desperate attempts to get him to walk out of the doors of City Hall and provide an explanation on this cost blowout uh, and on so many other things in this budget chair. The Metro is a bit like City Cycle. We keep paying more, but we keep getting less. The Metro is shrinking all the time, Chair. It started out being a grand subway system that, is, uh, that would you know, be transformative for Brisbane, apparently. Uh, now it's a short busway extension. City Cycle was supposed to be a cost-neutral exercise and provide a genuine alternative uh, for people wanting to travel around our city. What we now know about City Cycle is that hardly anyone is riding it anymore. Uh, its escalating costs now are the difference between ongoing investment in suburban cycling infrastructure and missing links. And what we're getting is missing links. These bikes need to be converted to e-bikes immediately and the whole JC to code contract should be rewritten so there is a genuine benefit to the people of Brisbane. Chair, we have long said that a CBD separated cycle grid would be the shot in the arm that City Cycle needs, and we certainly hope it's not too late uh, for that to occur now. Um, we're glad that this administration has followed our lead in implementing the pop up CBD cycle grid and moves towards a more permanent um, solution there. The bus build chair doesn't fare any better than the poor old Metro. Um, the, uh, the chair, Councillor uh, Murphy, has um, uh, tried to allude to the fact that we're going to get a new bus build, um, but the reality, a uh, new bus build contract, the reality in these budget papers uh, is um, uh, pretty stark, I think. Uh, so instead of um, costing more for less, like the Metro and City Cycle, what we're getting in the bus build contract is actually less for less. There's no expenditure for future bus builds. So even if there was a new contract coming down the line in the future, in the forward estimates, uh, there would be some budget allocation for this. Um, the, uh, the chair was quite explicit um, that the Lord Mayor didn't make any commitments at the last election to, to continuing the bus build in any way. So as far as we know, there may, there may never be a bus built in Brisbane again after this year. There are just 55 buses being built this year, 45 rigid and 10 articulated buses. 
but there are 78 being retired from the fleet. So the unenviable trend under the LNP continues, Chair. Less buses for our suburbs. Brisbane is now the second most congested city in Australia. We have an administration that's making Metro up as it goes along, is failing to keep the bus fleet up to the levels required to cope with a growing city and missing the mark on just about every aspect of active transport. Getting Brisbane moving again post-COVID requires a comprehensive mobility plan that takes into account how our city moves and, ha and how we take the pressure off our roads through public transport, cycling and walking. But we know the state of Brisbane's footpath network is pretty dire. There are 15,702 streets in Brisbane. Of those, just 9,448 have some form of footpath, sealed footpath on them. Of those 9,448 streets with a footpath on them, just 3,536 have a complete footpath. So think about that statistic. There are 12,166 streets in Brisbane that either have incomplete or no footpaths at all. That's over 77% of Brisbane remaining inaccessible by so many people. Chair, these are the forgotten suburbs of Brisbane. As I said in my budget reply speech, the Lord Mayor's budget has really missed the mark on active transport. This should have been a budget delivering more for walking and cycling to capitalise on the surge in active transport and support real behaviour change. But instead, this LNP administration is just plodding along at the same speed. When Labor proposed a mobility plan to get Brisbane moving as we emerged from the COVID-19 pandemic, this LNP Lord Mayor scoffed at the idea, suggesting they didn't need to acceler accelerate active travel opportunities or priorities. We know people are taking more to cycling and walking to get around, and it is time for Council to step up and support this change. So Labor put forward a mobility plan to get Brisbane moving post-COVID-19 with short, medium and long-term priorities chair. In the short term, we need to see the fast tracking of walkable neighbourhood projects with new footpaths, ramps, safer crossings, creating wider, safer spaces for walking immediately by, by implementing pop-up barriers and using pop-up barriers to create a CBD cycling grid, which is something the administration has taken on board. Uh, in the medium term, bringing forward cycling projects to fix missing links, making our streets uh, in the suburbs and the CBD safer for cycling and walking and boosting funding to make sure damaged footpaths are fixed properly and swiftly. And in the long term, setting a goal to make Brisbane suburb the most walkable in Australia and making our um, green bridges genuinely uh, green with uh, uh, public transport options on them as well. On Green Bridges, Chair, I'm struck at just how similar this announcement was to the original uh, Brisbane Metro and the subsequent walking back of that commitment. We were promised five green bridges by this uh, new Lord Mayor at the time. Now we hear one of them is looking for a new home after Councillor Adaman knocked it off. We've heard a lot about the fast tracking of two bridges, Breakfast Creek and Kangaroo Point, which collectively will cost around $300 million. However, this year there is just $22 million allocated to the project. When pushed on the funding arrangement, Councillor Murphy said that the Lord Mayor um, had never said Council would fund two thirds of the project that it was just fixed at $550 million as a contribution, except for the fact that the Lord Mayor did say that Council's contribution was two thirds, and he is uh, quoted in um, numerous media articles about that. So given the cost of one of these bridges is $190 million on its own, there is a serious cost blowout coming on this project. Does that sound familiar to everyone here? Now more than ever, Brisbane needs a budget to deliver more for active travel, but instead we have a budget which delivers cuts to active travel over the next three years, with capital spending down $268 million from last year's projections. Labor believes with the right focus and strategic investment, Brisbane can be an active transport city. However, that won't happen under this Lord Mayor and his administration chair. Uh, with less than 4% of the $3.2 billion budget this year earmarked for active travel, you get an idea of how much a priority walking and cycling projects are for this council. When you take the green bridges out, it's closer to 3% of the budget. Uh, in meetings with cycling stakeholders, uh, one of the key messages from Bicycle Queensland and Space for Cycling is that there needs to be not only an increase in spending, but a more strategic spend. We couldn't agree more. It's a recurring theme time and time again. 
the administration invests in a couple of signature projects while fails to invest in the cycling and pedestrian infrastructure, which fixes those missing links and provides real connectivity uh, for active travel. The major bikeways projects is a case in point. It's just one single project being funded. It should be called the one bikeway project item. The Indrapilly bikeway is being funded over the next two years, which is already including a carryover, and then the funding dries up completely. While cycling groups welcome green bridges, it shouldn't be at the expense of important walking and cycling infrastructure in the suburbs. Queensland's peak motoring body, the RACQ, also recognises the need for further investment in better pedestrian and cycling infrastructure. With over 250,000 of their members identifying as cyclists and all of them as pedestrians at some point, the RACQ says they too back calls for better investment in new footpaths and cycling facilities. One of the real disappointments uh, in funding for pedestrians, was well, funding for pedestrians in this budget chair. As Queensland Walks highlighted in our meetings, there is a real need to invest in uh, um, properly fixing up broken footpaths and investing in new ones, especially in and around suburban hubs like schools and shops. People have fallen back in love with their local neighbourhoods uh, and uh, as they're getting out and spending more time on foot or pedalling around their communities, they're noticing the lack of footpaths and other infrastructure to make these options. Your time has Are there any further speakers? Point of order. Councilor Landers. Point of order. Uh, Mr Chair, I move that Council now adjourn for lunch for one hour, which commences only when all councillors have left the meeting. Second that. I have a resolution from Councillor Landers, seconded by Councillor Hutton, that this council now adjourn for a period of one hour for the purpose of lunch, commencing when all councillors have vacated the meeting. All those in favour, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. Thank you. Lower your hands and those against, please say no and raise your hand. Thank you. The ayes have it. The meeting's adjourned for one hour.